welcome to LM Virtual. Yeah, good morning. We've got a beautiful lineup for you today with lots of special guests. And uh, first up, we've got Calico with Beyond the Body with special guests Micah and Craig Villarubia. Yeah, you do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> This is just the way the morning's going, we're winging it. Uh, followed by um, Dan and Marie with Access Miracles, special guest Michael Caruana. And after that, there's Come Into the Light with special guest Jeff Wilbur. And um, then Emily with the Song of Prayer. And finally, uh, The Last Step with Jeffrey. The Last Step with Jeffrey and Frank. And Frank. Yeah. So <laughs> we're gonna take it over to Calico now with Beyond the Body. Just a little runaway Forty-seven years and still I'm on the run Afraid of love I'm keeping God at bay Spending days in a nightmare ain't much fun I am just a little runaway For my misery always blaming someone else I'm really into judgment and delay But only hurting me <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> it's Beyond the Body, and it's uh, a beautiful day here in Mexico. And uh, I'm, I want to look up at the, the, the faces, but I'm supposed to look at the camera so that you feel like we're having this one on one experience. So, anyway, I don't know who's here, but I'm glad you are. Um, Today is a special show. We're going to be talking about cascading miracles. And this is something I used, I was saying for a while until um, uh, one of my community members and I had a talk about it. I used to say I'm in the middle of a giant miracle. And <clears throat> that's not completely accurate because the really what's happening is the miracles are cascading like a waterfall. Um, they don't end, they just keep falling. Like, and, and that leads me into a beautiful quote that I found that kind of really says a lot about what today's program is in, in the text. Um, and I didn't put down where I got it from, but I think it's in the workbook. Um, it's the, what is a miracle? Miracles fall like drops of healing rain from heaven on a dry and dusty world where starved and thirsty creatures come to die. Now they have water. Now the world is green. And everywhere the signs of life spring up to show that what is born can never die. And what has life has immortality. And I think that really speaks to today's program. Um, if you, any of you have not seen the first um, Beyond the Body segment, I highly recommend you go to the, uh, the link that will be provided by Alexa um, that has all the programs from the first, first set of shows. Because Lila Stenberg, a, an angel friend of all, um, was on that program. And um, well, it, it's a program in and of itself. And since that program, she has laid down her skin suit and, and stepped off into the the white light in God's, what did she say? In a blaze of, of glory into God, Father, her father's heaven. So um, what I have today are two, two other people that were really touched by Lila. And we're gonna share the cascading miracles that have come from, in the world at large, um, grief is a funny thing and not seen as something positive. And what I've gotten from this whole process with Lila, and I'm, I'll cry, <laughs> but it's a positive thing. These are tears of miracles on a otherwise dusty and dry something. <laughs> anyway, um, so the miracle today is uh, my two friends is Micah and Craig Villarubia. Um, Micah is in Hawaii, 
and Craig is in Los Angeles, so we're having kind of a, a global event happening here. And um, I'm going to start with them, and we're just going to share share the grace that Ly that Lila is, because uh, I don't even see her as not being here, quite frankly. I see her everywhere and in everything. So, Micah, are you there? Oh, there you are. Hi, honey. <laughs> Um, if you'd like to just share, um, yeah, we've shared so much, and uh, I just know that you've had some pretty amazing things come out of this whole process, and so I can't wait to hear your side of the, the ocean. Hi. Very early here still. <laughs> <laughs> it's five o'clock, folks. <laughs> um, God, I don't even know where to start. This, this whole journey has been so amazing and um, yeah I'm just thinking about what what you and I shared Calico and it's so much that seriously I don't even know where to start but um, what I what I do feel very strongly now is I, I woke up and it was early and um, and I I was <laughs> a little shaky and I felt I felt a lot of emotions coming up and that is one of the things that we talked about that um, I I had a hard time after Lila's passing to feel her everywhere because every everyone was saying oh I feel Lila so much now she's everywhere and she's not contained in a body anymore and I feel her and I didn't because I you know I was just going through all these emotions I was sleeping on the hospital floor next to her when it when she passed and and I woke up and she wasn't there anymore and and you know it's I went through all that form stuff and I couldn't just switch to oh now she's everywhere but I but everyone um seemed to feel it so I was so afraid to to lose her you know what I mean and um uh yeah, and, and, and then I, I started to realize that um, that I was not to spiritualize all these emotions because they're there too and, 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 and just let them be there and let them out and let them go and invite Lila to go through it with me. And, and that's been really helpful. That's and, beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful because yeah. I know we had talked about that as far as you know it's Lila is ever present just like Holy Spirit is um, but there needs to be an invitation mm -hmm. and it's kind of like I know for myself it's like anywhere I am I can invite Lila in just like I can invite Holy Spirit in and boy I tell you it's been a profound process because she's always there I mean, I had a, an event with a flower the other day that, you know, was Lila. And it was, and it was clearly on the invitation on my part. And I know that we've been talking about that, um, that process. Now, you also scattered her ashes. And I know this was kind of, there was a lot of stuff going on with the cremation and the scattering. Would you like yeah. to share about that at all? Yeah, 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 for sure. So, um... So that's another thing that, that hit me, and it hit you too, right? When, when we heard that, when we knew it was the day of the cremation, um, even though we were so in the light with her and we felt her everywhere, just the knowing that the body was going to be cremated just really hit me. And, and I hadn't seen her body after we left her at the hospital. So it was not like we were with her body the whole time at all, because she didn't care about the body. So... We didn't really care about it, but just the knowing that, oh, this is the next step. Now the body is not even going to be there. And then the next day, Craig comes home because I was staying with Craig. And he brought this bag of ashes. <laughs> and we were looking at it like, whoa, this is amazing. I mean, wh what the hell is this stuff? It is so <laughs> weird. And... Um, and then the, the, all the miracles that happened um, around that scattering, because we, we planned to do that on a Friday with some people. But then the island here started erupting. 
<laughs> Which I just want to say, didn't, what did Lila say? She wanted, she had wrote, wrote out yeah, that. She, she that, said, uh, I ascended in a blaze of glory. Right. <laughs> well, she did, and you know, the whole island started erupting with her. So, and, and that's another cool thing, because um, the eruptions that are happening now, they've been comparing those to the ones in 1955, which is Lila's birth year. So <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> And then, and then, so the, the eruptions are happening in Leilani Estates, which is like Lila. <laughs> yeah, so that's crazy. So we weren't even able to go down to the place where she wanted to be scattered um, because of the eruptions. And then I tried it again a few days later and I just you know I just took the ashes put her next to me in the in the passenger seat <laughs> went for a road trip with her and then like 10 minutes on the road I see a hitchhiker and I picked him up and 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 right when I picked him up or I stopped for him I thought oh my god what did I do it looked like a homeless person and I was like shit oh my god but I decided okay I'm meeting myself this is myself too so he was sitting next to me and he was talking and then it turned out that he actually lived in that area and I was afraid that they would only let residents in so he was my golden ticket into that area so I was like yes okay this is Lila's plan now and uh and yeah then we scattered it and that was beautiful and weird too because what do you do I mean like I know that well, you you even said Lila couldn't have cared less if we scattered her in a parking lot, you know. <laughs> it's not that she really cared, and I know that all of it, all of it is more for us. Yeah, for, totally for us. And and even um, me finding her in her apartment and calling the ambulance and taking her to the hospital, I realized that that was for me. And it was not for her because I know that she would have been totally fine dying seemingly on her own uh, in on her living room floor in, yeah, in her apartment. But and it was no, she wasn't alone. We know no, she, wasn't she she alone. knew all the time she wasn't alone. You know, <laughs> even a week before that, when I when I left her, I said, please call me, I'll come back if you need me. Please call me. I knew she wouldn't call me. Because she didn't need anything. Yeah. But when I came back and I found her, um, uh, and I took her to the hospital, I know that was for me because it was it was a way gentler, uh, it was a gentler way for me to to see her go and be with her instead of just finding her on the floor, right? So I'm really grateful for that that she let that happen because for me that was a beautiful ending of the whole process. You know, I'm just going to jump in because that was the, 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 the day that she was cremated was kind of a big day for me. I, I was fine. I, I really went through a very quick grief process for an afternoon, went to the lake and I saw Lila and the birds and she was everywhere. And then when you said she was being cremated, there was, I was hit by emotions again. Mm -hmm. And it was really this letting go of form. It, there was something so real about it, but then I started <clears throat> listening to Holy Spirit, and you know, I never had the pleasure of meeting Lila in form. We had a relationship online, and it was like, I mean, I had like an hour and a half a Skype call with her once. I had the pleasure of eye gazing via Skype, and it was one of the most profound experiences of my life, so I never knew her in form, and you actually mentioned that you went out one night with her scarf and it smelled like Lila. And I went into some emotional thing of like, I don't know what Lila smells like. <laughs> it's like, that pissed me off, excuse me. That upset me greatly. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what Lila smells like. But it was like, that wasn't my relationship to her in form. My relationship with Lila really was in mind, and it was a profound, probably one of the closest relationships I've ever had was with Lila. And it was like, and I never met her. <laughs> so when I heard she had been cremated, there was this, oh, I won't have that opportunity anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I must say, I did go through a process of clearing that too. 
Listen, I want to get Craig in here. Um, half an hour is not long enough for this show. So, Craig, are you there? Yes, I see you. Hi, Craig. I am. How are you? <laughs> Craig also, Craig Villarubia is a very close friend of Lila's also, and I use it in the present tense because I really don't feel like she's gone anywhere. But please share your experience of this process and anything that feels on your heart to share. Yeah, thank you. Um, wow, yeah. Um, I think, you know, for me, um, this whole process and, and continued process is about um, allowing the doubt to be dissolved. The doubt in, um, I think, I wouldn't be on this process of healing or awakening if I if there wasn't a seeming doubt of, reality and its existence and, and the truth and there's a lot of things that um i know i've talked about intellectually understanding but didn't necessarily have a um experiential understanding and i think this whole thing with what lila's uh experience has offered me as well as like many teachers is um their conviction and um lila's conviction in what was true um, helped me with whatever doubt that I have and my fears of death to be able to yeah. witness um, her fearlessness towards death, her conviction in um, eternity, her conviction in, in, in eternal life um, has drawn me in it drew me in and it does draw, it dry, you know, this morning I woke up and I felt a little pain in my chest and I felt like the body thought of, oh my God, what's, what, what's that? And immediately she came to mind. <laughs> so she, she is with me still. And when, um, in, 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 in the same way, um, other teachers and Jesus is with me in that um, the whole mind training is being supported by these beautiful symbols and being reflected. Um, by these these people who have seemed to go ahead of me and show me the way. And I told this to Lila even before she passed that I felt like um, she was kind of leading the way for for me, but really for, for all in, 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 a, in looking at death the way that she saw it, which she didn't really see it, um, in sharing the painlessness of her experience. She, 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 she brought home the point to me that there was no pain. Oh my God. Like, and, and with that level of conviction, it's just the relief, you know, miracles being an expression of love. I felt that love, that unconditional um, viewpoint. And you know, um, I just want to jump in on this, Craig, because this is a really important thing. This whole idea of pain, fear of pain. And I, you know, coming from a medical model, as a doctor, liver cancer is known to be one of the most brutal cancers you can get, filled with lots of pain. And this is one thing, Lila and I talked about this a lot. It's like staying in the moment, there's no pain. You cannot have pain in this moment. As long as you're in the moment, if you go into the past or you jump to the future, pain will be expressed quite quickly because it's the fear of pain coming or the fear of pain that we've known to have in the past. We actually talked quite a bit about this because she had no pain, none. And that is profound, really. Yeah, I just yeah. had to jump in when you said that. <laughs> no, I think that's, that's, that's beautiful. And I think that's what... Um what was demonstrated her capacity or, or the ability or the experience or the result of mind training I, I don't know but what was demonstrated is is such a level of um steadfast attention in spirit that doesn't allow for the attachment to um or the ownership of pain and i i i know i mean i think a lot of us know what it feels like to fear pain um, uh, I often, I often refer to myself as a chicken when it comes to the doctor and, and not one, but, but 
I also could see the, um, there's like a stickiness to it and a stickiness to the pain that um, Lila didn't seem to have. So, wow, I got to witness the possibility to, um, that it is possible to not take ownership or label or um, see oneself at the effect of, of that perception of pain. And, 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 and that's priceless for me. And it's, um, it's just a testament uh, to, to the mind training and, and the whole forgiveness process. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I mean, pain, yes, pain is, and yes, pain is, is certainly a scary thing. And <laughs> I, I mean, again, you know, when, you know, like this morning when I woke up and I felt that, that little chest pain, and there was Lila, it's like, oh, wait, you know, you know, where's my attention on the body? Okay, so, you know, how do I open myself up to the miracle? Oh, call, call in spirit, be willing to, to be wrong right. about what I just judged that feeling, like, be wrong that um, it's mine. Um, am I willing to do that? And um, Lila, the thought of Lila came in and certainly um, I'm sure I walk, I continue to welcome it. And I'm sure it'll come whenever is needed. Yeah, that's beautiful, Craig. I, I just thank you because I know you've had a, a rather, as far as chronological time, you've, you've seen Lila progress through this whole process. And I call it grace. I mean, some other people may call it death, but she was a state of grace. And it was, um, I know that you, you spent a lot of time with her. And I must say, on some level, there's a little bit of an expression session here. Um, I'm jealous that you had that time with Lila in flesh. And it's like, um, yeah. And yet I have it now through you and Micah. And, and uh, you know, I feel like I knew her as well as anyone can know somebody. And, uh, and she shared with such openness about everything. I mean, she, there was nothing hidden ever. She held nothing back. And, uh, and it was really a joy, her joy in every moment, no matter what her body might have been going through. And I don't know. Because she never talked, we talked about staying in the moment, because I did talk to her a lot about pain. And she said, no, it's a moment by moment. You have to stay very vertical. <clears throat> and that's the practice. You know, that's a course in miracles right there. It's like how to stay vertical, how to stay out of the future and away from the past. It's like, what's going on? I love what you said, you know, owning the body. You know, it's like, oh, I have a little pain in my chest like yeah why why would you want to own that <laughs> it's like maybe you want to rethink that with holy spirit and uh and move beyond that particular issue um is there anything you can say about your grief process as far as the actual passing of the form um um there 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 was maybe a moment where the temptation of um, I mean there was like a moment of the temptation of of, of sadness, but it wasn't I, I, you know I, I think that it, it was a, a whole miracle for me in the sense that I and it's weird because it there's a part of the mind that wants to judge it as cold, but I never felt grief because I don't feel like she ever like I I mean, I remember going to the hospital room, seeing the dead body, and it just was it didn't resonate as, um, like, it doesn't even, like, I'm not even, like, associated with the, with, with Lila. It doesn't, like, it doesn't, um, and, like, Micah was saying about, like, when we're looking at the ashes, it was just, like, there's no association. It's just not none whatsoever. And um, it was, nothing was a surprise. I mean, we all knew, I mean, all of all the all of our bodies will be laid to rest. But um, with Lila, you know, it seemed like we had a timeline, and um, we knew, so there was no surprise. And you know, I talked about death with Lila, and again, her conviction, her in the conversation, there was never sadness. There was never. I mean, we might as well have been planning. I mean, we were planning a party. I mean. I, we talked about like, you know, oh yeah, you know, when you clean the apartment, you know, have a pizza party. I mean, it, it was planning a party, 
and and and, and you know, I, I you know the lesson is really deep, but it's not serious, and um, uh, that's how I felt conversations were. They were very deep and but not serious in a way that there was concern about anything. Again, because the level of conviction was so high in in, in Lila, um, that left no room for um, you know suffering or, or sadness or or any it, there was no question. There was no questioning of it. It was just um just love, just unconditional yeah. love. Yeah, totally. And you know I had a because my my experience with Lila was virtual, really, um, since I never had that form content. It's funny, now it's, maybe it's a good thing I don't have her smell or a sense of her body because she lives in my head. She is just alive in my head as she was prior to her letting her form go. It's a very interesting phenomenon that I appear to be going through with this one. And um, I think it is what Jesus is, what, Jesus hasn't gone anywhere, you know? I mean, really? Is Jesus in your mind? Well, then Jesus is very much alive. And that's kind of the way I feel Lila is with me. And, and you know, you keep using the word conviction. It's like, yeah, as far as she was concerned, she wasn't going anywhere. You know, where am I going? <laughs> it's like oh right we're not going anywhere because she's right here she's well i point to my head and i don't can't even do that <laughs> she's in mind she's in the the mind of of god which is in all of us so yeah i thank you so much for sharing i i, I feel very close to you and like i said you're you're as virtual as lila and micah and it's just an interesting relationship that I seem to have formed in a very short period of time. <laughs> so thank you for sharing. And uh, m do either of you have any final words that you'd like to pass along? Yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, what you guys just were talking about, her conviction and her trust, that, that is something that really, really affected me. And and, and many people around her. I still hear some people, I, I still meet people that, um, that tell me, oh, I just got to meet her like quickly or I, I saw her for an hour and, and it affected me. And um, <coughs> um, it affected me too, just being around someone so close that had so much trust in this whole process how can I ever not trust anymore, right? It, it, it feels like impossible. You know, and I'm just going to kind of give a, a little plug in this whole I concept of trust, because we do have an online retreat at the end of this month with the development of trust. And I need to say, this is a huge, this is what A Course in Miracles is about, developing trust in something that is not of form. And uh, so I just invite everyone to, to look into joining us in the, the online retreat the, at the 28th, I think, of, of May, because we're gonna, the whole retreat is gonna be spent on the development of trust. And I must say, I, re I copied that section of the book out and read it so many times, over and over. And most of the time it made no sense to me, but it's now, getting clearer and clearer and it's as seeing living examples of of trust walking trust and so i thank you for sharing that mike it really it yeah it speaks to me greatly mm -hmm. um i think we're coming up on the 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 tail end of our program here and uh i just i was looking through the course because i keep bringing lila back to the course just because she was so present for me in the teachings of Jesus. Um, she was, in my world, a master teacher. And um, I came across Lesson 132, and it just feels like, um, yeah, this, this speaks to me of Lila. Lesson 132, um, just, a, just a sentence. The, 
the sick are healed as you let go all thoughts of sickness, and the dead arise when you let thoughts of life replace all thoughts you ever held of death. And I think that's what this whole program really is about. It's beyond the body. And uh, we have to see that we're making this stuff up in our minds. And as long as we continue to think thoughts of sadness or loss or grief, we will continue to experience sadness, loss, and grief. Because as we think, we project. So with that one last line, because this is beyond the body, communion is another kind of completion, which goes beyond guilt because it goes beyond the body. So thank you, Craig and Micah. Oh, I love you guys so much. And all of you for, for participating. Have a great moment. <laughs> love you. Love you. <laughs> was just a tiny mad idea At which the Son of God remembered not to laugh We built an altar made of hate and fear We let the ego live on our behalf Wow, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Craig and Micah. Really wonderful to join with you here. Well, I just had one line running through my mind as you were talking, Calico. It's that line from the course that says, teach not that I died in vain, or teach not that I died, but rather that I live in you. It's just, yeah, it's just so present in my mind. And uh, I also just felt to, to share about um, this upcoming awakening from the dream retreat because it is in fact about the development of trust and devotion actually is another big inspiration for it so um we've just finished our last awakening from the dream retreat and it's they're just spectacular they just blow us away every time and i know that many of you here join us for the retreats too so um you can tune in to that that's going to be june 1st through the 3rd so it's the first full weekend of every month and um, that will be hosted by David and Michael Caruana will be there and many other um, of the elders and other teachers here from Living Miracles. So with that, um, did you have anything, Susan? Yeah, I, I just thought that was all really powerful. And what stood out to me was something around, you know, when Craig mentioned that he part of the process for him was using it to see the doubt in his mind like he was like just kind of watching the thoughts and it's, it was all kind of being used by the spirit for healing you know right you know with, with her passing away and and or the process afterwards and everything and yeah so what came to mind was just how this past few days i've been fighting basically a sore throat <laughs> and i mean it looks like two different forms or something of what's going on but for me I've just it's really been amazing to watch how when I'm tuning into this like kind of body this personal self I can be really aware of the sore throat and it's like oh my god I have this problem I have to deal with it you know what do I you know this kind of victim sort of experience can really be strong actually it was this morning and you know thankfully I yeah I, when I reached out I, I ran into you Calico who helped me get some lozenges which is very helpful <laughs> but but with all of that I just really noticed the more I more I'm really present and letting go of, of that focus on that personal self and what this body's doing and you know and focus much more on my, what's my function what 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 is the spirit having me do right now like where is my attention to be and that sore throat actually vanishes it just becomes nothing and so anyways it just kind of it's such a, a living experience of that like just how actually have a choice here based on how present I want to be, which is my choice actually. So I can, I can do that. So I loved what you were saying, everything about that with Lila and how, you know, she wasn't feeling pain with her, you know, in her condition and had to do with being present and, and just sort of giving her whole heart to the moment. And so, yeah, I just really love that. So thank you. So, okay. Well, Come back for um, 
the next show, we've got Access Miracles with Dan and Marie and special guest Michael Caruana. That'll be in about 10 minutes or so, so stay tuned. I want to talk about Unwind Your Mind 30-day experience today. It is a free 30-day program for anyone who studies A Course in Miracles or anyone who is interested in awakening or healing in the mind. Our minds are so used to look at the world and ourselves from an egoic perspective in that we lose touch with our true identity and with the inner guidance that can lead us back to the awareness of being one with God. And this program is like a 30-day detox for the mind. On Monday of each week, you will receive uh, the theme of the week. And those themes are very common themes and problems that people are dealing with in their everyday lives, such as money, addictions, relationships, etc. Um, for the rest of the week, you will be receiving daily messages that are teachings or movie clips or reminders. And the purpose of them is to remind the mind to, to remember its true identity and to help the mind open up to a complete new way of looking at everything and a deeper understanding of how to use whatever that comes up in the mind for the purpose of awakening. So this is a very practical, gentle and powerful approach and it really helps the mind to get in touch with um, the deeper truth and deeper inner guidance. I hope you enjoy it. Hi everyone. It's a beautiful day and we just felt to... It is a beautiful day. Talk about right. a little bit about the Quiet Answer Retreat that's coming up the end of June. And uh, just share our feelings about it, really. Yeah, I just really appreciate the ebb and flow of, of how the space has been used. Mm -hmm. And I haven't been here for quite a while, so I just came up a couple of days ago. And, oh, it just feels mm -hmm. so nice to be here. Yeah. Really nice. I feel it holds mm -hmm. like that space, whatever you're, you're here for, 
It's so completely supported. Yeah. You know, it's like you come and you somehow it, like you give yourself 100% permission to mm -hmm. to do what you came for. Yeah. You know? And I think that that's what this retreat is for. It's going to be more of an experience to come into and to experience the love and the presence really of this present moment and that's what's so inspiring to us right now is letting go of linear time and just seeing the beauty and the abundance of what's offered in the present moment and so when you come into this environment and you start to open up to that it's like a whole new world can open up to you and there will be um, uh, availability for sessions where if there's anything on the heart that you've wrestled with um, that there will be time spent with that so that there can be that deep application of just forgiveness and and really really going away with a sense of uh, upliftment and and a, a greater sense of peace mm -hmm. yeah. yeah 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 and whether you are already experiencing uh, mm. dropping into the stillness or that is the prayer of your heart that you feel this call mm. knowing that you need it, yeah. um, this is the kind of retreat where you can come no matter where you're at yeah. with that experience mm -hmm. um, because there's a lot of support. It, it's Gonna, there'll be there's some structure obviously with breakfast and lunch and you know the meal times and then also the coming together for a guided meditation for an altar session mm -hmm. and we really do support um, the awareness of mindfulness and the backdrop of mind training to which is the the practice of stilling the mind to then allow the mm -hmm. silence to come into awareness because as we all know you can't make silence happen yeah. you can't make stillness happen the one that wants to make something happen is the very part of the mind that is to be mm -hmm. released to to come into the experience of the silence that's always there mm -hmm. and so we're yeah just very much in support of um, practice for just training the mind to be still and present um, and and then if your mind is ready to really drop into the vast stillness mm -hmm. then this is a very supportive mm -hmm. environment and atmosphere to, mm -hmm. to allow that to happen yeah it feels like it will be highly individualized in a way like mm -hmm. you said all are welcome no matter where you think you're at on the journey and the name of it is The Quiet Answer, which came to us in prayer, and we just loved that. There's a section in the course called The Quiet Answer, and, and there was a beautiful post about this retreat talking about how God will answer us in the stillness of, of our mind and our heart, and, and, and I feel like that's what this is for. Mm -hmm. Like It's kind of like a step aside so that that which loves you can find you. You know, instead of seeking, 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 it's like there's just this gentle stepping back mm -hmm. into this quietness of the mind. And, and so that will be guided. That will be guided as needed. And so it is a silent retreat, It's but it's not complete silence. It's a contemplative retreat. It's a nurturing, loving, um, beautiful. I just feel like it's like going to the spa like we used to in, the, in our life before you know and just be, just be pampered the body and everything and this is like this is a spa for the soul and just to come here and just to be loved up and to be nurtured and carried and to and to really mm, kind of uncover that worthiness of that and to just accept accept it in so we just really extend a warm invitation that's what we wanted to share today is just yeah come join us for this beautiful time together mm -hmm. Yeah, still mind is no small gift. <laughs> we are in deep appreciation yeah. <laughs> of a still mind, and and so to support support this mm -hmm. for anyone who's called to come really is our joy, like the deepest yeah. joy of our heart. Yeah, the so relationship with God is what it's all about. Yeah, so.
<laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Hi, welcome back everyone. Okay, so for uh, our next show, we have Dan and Marie with Access Miracles and they have Michael on their show today and Michael's a, an elder with the Living Miracles community. So I think we'll just take it over to Dan and Marie and Michael. Hello everyone, welcome. Hi Marie. I'm Dan. Welcome to our show. Access Miracles. And uh, we have here Michael Caruana as our guest. Very excited. <laughs> and um, just to ground down, you know, as an anchor for the show, which is what we've been doing, we are holding on to, as kind of our platform, the fourth miracle principle, which I'm going to read right now. All miracles mean life. And God is the giver of life. His voice will direct you very specifically. You will be told all you need to know. So with that, <laughs> I'd like to uh, welcome once again, Michael. And <clears throat> um, Michael is overseeing the, uh, the, uh, La Casa, where, which is uh, the place where we live. And um, I had not met Michael before he came into uh, that position. And I am very happy to uh, be a part of um, this experience because uh, I'm learning a lot from him. And so <clears throat> we realized that there was a, a great deal of depth here and we wanted to check in with him and see what he could tell us about his experiences. I've written a few questions out and we've gone over them a little bit with him, but um, uh, we'll see where it goes. Um, there's a uh, lesson 135 in the Course in Miracles, it says a healed mind does not plan. And um, my question to you is, uh, being that uh, there was a great big transition for you um, being a planner, <clears throat> a family provider, and a CEO of a company, um, to becoming a miracle worker, where you went from a position of, of providing the answers, of, of providing an income, of uh, making all the decisions, to one where you were to listen and follow. Can you elaborate on that a little bit for us? <laughs> the transition. Yeah, the transition. The transition. Yeah, the transition. Okay. Wow. okay. <clears throat> <laughs> Where to start? Where to go? <laughs> well, the uh, yeah, I was very wound into the world. It's it uh, very much involved, and I was studying the course for five years before I even went to a course group. And when I came across this course group, uh, it was like a a big light bulb went on like, uh, okay, I've really got to experience this Course in Miracles. I, I love the languaging of the course and just love the, I love being in meditation around it and contemplating it and what have you, but then it was time to really apply it. And I didn't know how to really do that. Um, I thought I did, I thought I was doing it, but I really wasn't. And uh, joining Course in Miracles study group was helpful. And I learned about David at that very first meeting. And so the, the subsequent months, this was early 2009, by late 2009, I was really, I felt like I was really desperate to experience the course a lot more. And, I, and we had this retreat in Australia where actually Jason and Kirsten came and um, I don't know, something, another light bulb came on at that point where it was like, 
I needed a mind training partner. That's what, that's what I learned from that actually. And uh, <clears throat> a mind training partner was a very helpful thing. And I, I wasn't even sure what that was exactly, but I knew I wanted one. <laughs> it was like a buddy, you know, someone who wanted to join the awakening with me. So I went to my wife, my then wife said, do you want to be my mind training partner? She said, yep. And uh, we did that for a few weeks and it really didn't work out that well. We're on two different paths actually, but we gave it a good go. And from there, it was like a, <laughs> it was like a movement. Uh, there was a movement that I needed to make out of that marriage and out of the, um, my life there, which was, you know, I prayed on very, a lot actually. And I joined with mighty companions and became clear I needed to move on. But, so it was really just being in touch with the spirit and getting really clear on what my desires are. What did I really want? Um, you know, I was living a nice life, but was that giving me what I really wanted? And it, it wasn't, you know, it was nice. It was nice. And that was it. It was, but I wanted more than nice. And, you know, it was really checking. Is this the ego just wanting more? No, it was actually this real desire for awakening that was there that, uh, that was really driving me. <laughs> And that I really needed, and I was very much driven at the time, and so the spirit was using this uh, <laughs> this driving and this planning that it was there to be able to move forth. My idea of being in the present moment back then was was to plan. Actually, <laughs> if I was thinking about the future, then I was present. Uh, if I wasn't, then there was something wrong, you know, because especially the, the business that I'd set up it was like the sales needed to happen now, happen now, so the cash flow was really happening uh, way down the track. So if the sales weren't happening now, then I didn't have cash flow down the track and, and this sort of, sort of thing. And so it was like this, this planning was happening all the time, you know, even just planning functions in the future and this sort of thing. And, and I just didn't really know how to be fully present. Although when I meditated, I could actually felt this presence, but I wasn't able to bring that into my everyday life. And, this, and the guidance then really stepping in and saying, okay, I want to bring in this, this guidance. I want to bring this presence of mind that I have when I'm, when I'm meditating and when I'm reading the course into everyday life, because it really seemed to be separated. My work life and my family life was different to my meditation and contemplation and being with the, the course. So that was it. Actually, actually, actually being really much, very much in tune with the spirit as much as I could and then joining with the Mighty Companions, you know, um, a mind training partner came in that was very, very helpful, that deep desire, someone you know, Melanie came in who was amazing and uh, very, very helpful. Along with the Mighty Companions, I just found that very important. It was a very important step for me to be able to move on from uh, this place where I wasn't sure how to be fully present, to be able to become much more present with a, having a shared purpose with someone. So, and I could just move on to, <laughs> you got other questions, but I think there's an important point that, uh, you know, we actually, an important part of this, if you call it transition, but certainly the progress in my mind was doing the mystical mind training program with Melanie. And so I'd have this mind training partner, being able to have a buddy to do MMT. And at the time it was amazing. And now it's progressed way beyond what that was at the time. Uh, is incredibly helpful, you know, and I found before I came to community, doing that program with a buddy was amazing so whether you call that a plug or something but it was actually very real for me at the time um and i highly recommend yeah mystical mind training it was it was really helpful with a buddy you know so wow that's that's uh that was something i hadn't <clears throat> experienced uh, before i came in the mystical mind training and I've, uh we've gone into it somewhat since being at la casa hmm. and uh it is really powerful um terms i've heard before and and experiences and so forth but actually to to go into it and study it was mm. really helpful <clears throat> it's something i think that um is one of the ways of uh, collaborating that uh, is available to everyone out there and um uh i think that that's that's probably a, a very strong way of of keeping in touch with uh with the community with because it is really a huge community it's, it's a collaboration we were talking about it and it was something that really struck us yeah i think you know the community that we're speaking about isn't about 
the form, which is in Mexico or in Utah, you know, this is the community of that one mind that says, you know, I, I want to keep remembering that I am the child of God, you know, I want to keep remembering my innocence. And when you link with us through, you know, social media, whether it's Ellen Virtual TV, or you keep watching things like David's talks on YouTube, or listen to, we have weekly things that go on, you know, movie gatherings that are immediately put online for people to listen to and to be a part of. Um, it's, it's, um, it's available to everyone. So this is all about everyone having access to the extension phase that Living Miracles is in. So yeah, this is, this is an invitation for everyone. Nobody is exempt from this and everybody can access it for themselves so that we can hold the space for one another. Um, I had another question um, that <clears throat> had to do with uh, learning how to, uh, how to trust. And that was something we touched on just briefly. Um, and you have given a couple of examples. And I wonder if one of them being the trust walk, and which was great. I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good one. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think yeah, I'm guessing the point of this is to see how <laughs> where I was <laughs> yes. and how things can actually shift. If I can trust, then anyone can. I think that's what this is because I was on a trust walk uh, at a devotional in uh, late 2009 with Melanie, and you know you have the blindfold on and they lead you around and you you know you you trust you meant to trust them as they take you around and and you just feel this connection with your with your brother. Well. I um I was trying to lead her while I had my blindfold on, uh, <laughs> not trusting at all. And um, when I took the blindfold off, I said, uh, "Don't get used to this, girly." <laughs> so <laughs> I was <laughs> I had a long way to go to trust. Um, and uh, but with the desire in my heart, it was uh, there was that that transition, you know. Um, I think I was actually, I was very sarcastic and it blew me away when I really realized how sarcastic I was in my everyday life. I'd cover, I'd use humor to, to cover over um, the judgments that I had and the grievances really. And so that was quite an undoing. But again, with the desire and um, really that single focus, like let thine eye be single, you know, from the Bible and being really that desire to be aligned with the spirit and joining with mighty companions was really, was this development of trust, was this undoing of the self or certainly this, you know, I had a lot of layers to get rid of just to start, <laughs> start getting slightly in tune with anything. Um, but it was very, very worthwhile. As I can see, it just the, over the time and, and the desire has been the most important part of this. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I think I, I think I just want to segue and share for people like what my experience of you that I'm so glad you shared that with us, Dan and I yesterday, because it's such a contrast, truly really is because my experience, our experience of you at La Casa is, you know, for somebody who came from this context of business, which is time is money. My experience of, of Michael is such patience. Time exits my awareness because he just sits there and allows whatever's rising from wh from whoever it is that's expressing, and yeah, it's just such yeah, such presence, such patience. And also the other day when we had to drive out because we had a power outage, and um, there were things that were forgotten, so we had driven out already. When we had, then we had to come back to La Casa, and you know, Michael just turned around to those of us that were in the car and with such humility, he just looked and said, well, we're back here again. He says, how does everyone feel? Do we stay or do we go? You know, in and of itself, it wasn't even so much the words. It was like how he was being about it and this openness and humility to being like, let's all really listen and pray. Does everybody hear the same thing? I don't want to just make the decision. It's, you know, it's that one mind. And I was really moved, really, really moved by how he was that moment. So... Yeah, thank you. Um, with the trust element that you had mentioned, was that something that, uh, how did that come about uh, for you? I mean, it, when you're shifting from being the boss, and I've, 
that's kind of what my experience was, you know, for, I had my own business for a long time. And uh, so the, I guess my question really is, is, is that something that was like, you heard it and you started to practice it and so forth, but was it, and is it still an ongoing process? Is it something, how, how would you describe that? Yeah, it's, it is an ongoing process. It's, um, it's really a step-by-step. -step. And even just like little steps, I was always in the big things, you know, big, 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 everything had to be big, you know, big planner, big thinker. There's plenty of people to handle the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. That was my big thing. You know? And, um, and so of course, spirit brought it in where I really needed to get into small stuff. What seemed to be in my mind to be able to become much more attentive, um, because really my, I was, had a very much a monkey mind. I was very, very busy minded. And uh, where I was thinking I was having all these great ideas, really it was a lot of distraction. So just to be able to come into focus um, and just work on what seemed to be small, even mundane things, but really give my attention to it was what the spirit led me to, to, to help me focus, eventually to focus on the spirit. I had a lot of resistance to start with. But I just knew deep down there was something to this, you know, even with the resistance, through the resistance, I could feel I meant to, to really focus on, on what seems to be small things so I could actually bring my alignment to the spirit more precisely and more consistently. So that's been a really good. The mind training is for that, you know, and this word that I really had a big problem with, mind training, yeah, it sounded like brainwashing. And yet, you know, when I really learned that we are brainwashed by the ego, you know, the, the idea of, you know, that we could be separated from God is a brainwashing, you know, and then just spinning out a cosmos. And so we need to be, if you like, mind trained instead of with the ego, with the spirit. And so it's a moment to moment thing, you know, in each moment is that we're either thinking with the spirit or thinking with the ego. We're in wrong mindedness or right mindedness. It's a big practice we do every day mm -hmm. there at La Casa in each moment, really, we're really on it because it's just so important, you know, and it's so easy to go into wrong mindedness. It's our default position, if you like, in the world. And, uh, and that's what we've been trying to do. So now we're training our mind for the default position, if you like, for our, for that consistency to, to go into right mindedness instead of the wrong mindedness, where we can really be in our right mind and the miracle all the time it can be as easy and, and as natural as breathing. That's what we want to come to. And that takes training. That's the mind training, you know, and that's, and that's, very worthwhile it's the only worthwhile thing to be doing actually but we can do it anywhere and everywhere like it's not everyone needs to be in community it's it's where you are right now you know to be fully present you know to be uh, not distracted with with uh, the future planning or the past events the memories just to be here fully present now is is the training in each and every moment so it's not rocket science it's actually really quite simple but it's a it's a training it's a it's mindfulness that needs to happen to be able to do this so. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I think what, what I can hear for myself when you say that is how much of my mind is always involved in hypothetical health. You know, there's all kinds of like, oh, but what if, or oh, but what happened then? It's like, it takes a lot. And on the surface, it seems like it's, I don't know, um, harmless, but actually that's where hell is. That's, I find that's where my hell lives, you know? And yeah. it's, I, yeah, definitely. And for somebody who, as a CFO, I mean, I was in finance myself. I was reporting to a C CFO as well. It's like oh, finance is all about hypotheticals, you know, budgets and looking at past financial statements. You're never looking at the present. And to actually relinquish that is, yeah, that's pretty significant, mm -hmm. you know? So I don't know. I'm going to segue into the next question here, Dan, about inspiration. How do you feel about that? Inspiration. Let's see if I'm inspired here. <laughs> Okay, um, before I before I go into that, there was something else that, that I just that that occurred to me while you were explaining that mm -hmm. because in in a lot of our expression sessions, like in at lunchtime or whatever, there's a there's time taken at, to express how you're feeling, what it is, where you're feeling stuck, and, and you have a you have something that you do with your hand. You did it just then. And it was like this. And I'm like, that sticks in my mind. <laughs> and it was like, go from where you are, get, come, back. come back, come back. And I thought that was great because it, it really does, 
it's very simple, but it's like, where you been? Come back. And I love that. And it, it's, it's something that for a simple minded guy works really well, you know? <laughs> so I, yeah, I really appreciate that. Um, so that, that's, that's just one of the, of the ways that, that you uh, kind of bring us uh, along and, and help us to remember. Um, and then. What about the music, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, go ahead with that. Yeah, I think that I think that's one of the things that keeps happening is that, you know, there's such a push in the mind about accomplishing this awakening thing. And so it gets very driven. But Michael's presence is so gentle, like he'll just he has laughter and he has patience and then he's always coming in with music and and that's so restful because whatever defenses I have in my mind, I'm finding the subtle ones are showing up more. So I can offer it to spirit and say, Yeah, here here you go. Here's another defense I have in my mind wanting to avoid something or wanting to pull something towards me or again it's one of those hypotheticals and so yeah michael is music and dance actually so yeah and i guess part of the question regarding that is that <clears throat> we we notice that you are very joyful and and musical and i mean at the end of a meditation in the morning you you break out into a song and it's just like wow is that that's that's great and and how do you um how do you manage to keep that because in terms of function you have a lot on your plate mm -hmm. you you really it's it looks to me like you really do um so how do you yeah, yeah it's interesting i guess that comes from the, what we were talking about earlier where i was separating <clears throat> my meditational mm -hmm. meditations and contemplation and reading the course and even doing yoga at the time <clears throat> they were the the stalwarts that I that I worked on, I was w waking up earlier and earlier in the, the old days, just so I can have a few hours of doing that, and then the rest of the day was, I'd get through it, you know. Whereas now I, I feel like I'm bringing that more and more into everything that I do, um, and I don't need to be still to bring that meditational, peaceful sort of vibe, or being aligned with the spirit in, and so that just being aligned in each moment. It seems like the body could be doing quite a lot, and yet I'm I feel at peace. I feel really good, and I find rest in whatever's given. You know, if when the more I can get out of the way, the more Michael gets out of the way, the more I'm in touch with the spirit. Then he is just really using this puppet, this this body, for whatever his purposes are. So whether I'm sitting here talking to you right now, uh, I'm actually resting, or the body seems very physical, it's actually there's no real difference. I'm, I'm experiencing more and more now. I can't say I'm totally there, but it's happening. And I, I, I want to keep moving in that direction because I feel the benefit of it. I feel how wonderful it is. So whatever comes from that, and I really, I've had to work a lot on not making anything happen because that's what I've done a lot in my life. And now it really just seems to be coming through. So if a song comes through, it's really not me doing it. You know? It's like the spirit prompting it. And it seems to be oftentimes we have a, in the morning, just like the perfect song comes in. I, mm. You know, it's not me. I, I couldn't possibly do that you know, <laughs> out of the tens of thousands of songs out there. Somehow a song comes out or a, a clip or a something. I don't know, something comes through, uh, which I just love. You know, I get as much. It, it's not as if I'm doing it for anyone else. I think this is the, another key point that whereas I used to do a lot of things for others and thinking that was very uh, spiritual mm. and I was being, you know, very giving, it was actually coming from a place of the ego. It was actually the spiritual ego, if you like, a place of um, thinking I'm trying to do right in the world, but really it's not w what was coming through, it was what I thought was right. Um, whereas now I, I'm feeling like I'm aligning a lot more with the spirit and doing what he wishes, and then that's gonna benefit me and the whole. You know, there's no question about that, that I've seen it now over and over and over again, the experience I've had with when I'm aligned with the spirit, the whole universe, the whole cosmos, benefits from it me and everybody else you know it's the amazing thing about following guidance where it really doesn't make any sense to do anything else because it's not just for me and it's not just for them or those or anything else you know it's a everyone benefits from following the guidance following the spirit so really working on getting out of the way as much as possible and aligning with the spirit is really the only worthwhile thing to do <laughs> you know yeah. and then releasing yeah. the blocks that that come up around that that's the other important part that we we know about and having someone who's willing to hold the space for you to do that is 
is the other important part. But with that, then that's the whole awakening process. You know? Yeah. Um, Do you have any suggestions regarding <clears throat> um, people uh, who are very much interested in this, but maybe don't have a partner, don't have a group, um, feel themselves to be relatively isolated, uh, ways that they can um, like tie in mm. to exactly what we're doing and what we're, yeah. you know, this whole experience. Right, right. Yeah, community is not for everyone, that's for sure. And, uh, but there's like everyone on the screen there right now, they, they can be mighty companions or a number of them. There's no reason to do this by yourself anymore, you know, because there's such an opportunity with people beaming in here. You must have an interest in this. And if someone strikes you as, oh, I'd be interested in joining with this one or these ones, there's an opportunity just to chat and, and connect with them right now. <laughs> so there's that. And I think through Facebook, Facebook is an, can be an amazing tool. I think there's a lot of studies how destructive it is and everything else. And of course, anything given to the ego can be destructive, but anything can be given to the, but it all can be used by the spirit. The spirit can use anything in form. So Facebook can be very helpful. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's various ways of connecting in that can be very, very helpful. So Yeah, it seems like a matter of determination. Yeah. 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 You know, and linking into these shows, of course, is great. We have the online retreats and uh, linking in any way you possibly can, I think, is really helpful. I wish I had this <laughs> back, uh, yeah. you know, when I was starting out because I, yeah, it seemed very difficult at the time, whereas now it seems a lot easier. So that there really is no excuse. If you really want it, then it's available for you, you know, and just reach out. That's great. <laughs> I love that. Um, do you have something to say? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Francis Zhu said, uh, and this, and this Zhu. Zhu, yeah. She said that, um, that when inspiration is greater than fear, you take the leap. And whether or not that, what that looks like exactly, uh, is is specific for each of us. It's just different for everyone. But um, did you or do you still see that as being a, a a significant move for people? I mean, it seems like fear. I've heard it a lot. You know, I I really am feeling that I I need to do something, but I'm afraid. I'm afraid to move. I'm afraid to go back. I'm afraid to go forward. I I feel like I'm stuck. What 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 would you say to someone who comes up with that dilemma? Yeah, it's really just praying. And, and if you're given a step, just to take that step, no matter how small, you know, um, that's really what it's about. Fear is going to come up. It's, it's the ego. It's going to come up. And so just knowing it's, it's going to be there, I don't know, for me, it was incredibly helpful because I thought it was a problem, but it's just not. Mm -hmm. Fear is going to come up. And it's the veil that the ego puts up. But when you take the step, no matter how small you take a step towards what's given, what's guided, the veil will come down. And the fear will come up, okay. And again, mighty companions can be helpful for this, but just take the step, no matter how small it is, just do it and then take the next step. I, I give the, um, uh, I remember in the world when I was very much, and I used to say this a lot to people when we used to took on these great big projects, it's like, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? And so it's a similar thing in awakening. And I guess it's really just taking the step. And what seems to be a concrete wall really is just that, that thin fog. And on the other side is the light. So just take the step. That's it. It's just about taking the step. What was your inspiration? What is it right now? What inspires you? The spirit, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I just want to. It's the awakening. It's, you know, mm -hmm. God is what is my inspiration. Mm -hmm. That's my whole inspiration. And whatever is given to serve that is what inspires me in the moment. Mm -hmm. And it could be anything. Whatever it is now, I'm, I actually don't mind whatever it is, <laughs> whether it's cleaning a dish or doing what seems to be a big project or this right now. It all is very, very inspiring if it's given in the moment. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Is that half an hour? That's amazing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we're just, the train's just got I told down. you, it go really fast. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, and, I, and I think we covered all our questions, actually. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. Amazingly, miraculously. <laughs> yeah, there's probably nothing else to say. That was everything. <laughs> we can just do that yeah it's always the question are you complete well, it kind of feels that way 
<laughs> but I just right. wanted to thank everyone too yeah. for coming and thank you for being our guest. Yeah, in the show, it's, it's, it's really, great. Uh, it feels really good. So. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. And yeah, just to kind of segue, you know, it's that we have an, an online retreat coming, and the subject is the development of trust and devotion. So we kind of cover that pretty, pretty nicely in this session, and. Um, yeah, that's it's very interactive, isn't it? So it's fantastic. Those this yeah, is beautiful really here is. where we join, but you actually get to ask questions and really be involved. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's very, very intimate. It's, it's, it's really a moving experience to be a part of, even if you didn't speak and you just sat there and you just watched, but it's, it's really remarkable. So thank you, okay. everyone. Being waved off. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Where's the hook? <laughs> Love you guys. Thank you thank for you being everybody. with us. Thank you. Love you. <laughs> Love you, Sebi. <laughs> hey, John. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Dana Marie and Michael. I actually found that really inspiring. I was like, whoa, kind of bursting over here. But yeah, <laughs> it's like... <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I think one thing that came to mind actually was being asked to do this this MC thing and I was complaining yesterday that I didn't, didn't think it was for me to do and I had this fear coming up and oh surely someone else can do it better and you know it's like the ego had like a thousand reasons why I shouldn't do it and then you know I was just like no I'm just just gonna go for it and what what I keep seeing over and over is it's never what I think like every time I have an idea in my mind of what what it's gonna look like if I take the step or if the step is big, or even judging whether it's a big step or a small step. Like, I don't know, it's like I seem to be wrong every time. <laughs> and even this, it actually feels way, way different in my mind than what I was imagining or something. So anyway, it's just like, I, I love that. I love that, just being shown that I'm wrong every time. And so I feel like that's such a big part of all of this. So, so thank you, it's really beautiful. Do you have anything? No, I'm empty. That was wonderful. I'm bursting over here too. It's just beautiful. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, let's tune back in for uh, another show. We've got Anne coming up with Come Into the Light and special guest, guest Jeff. And uh, we'll see you in 10 to 12 minutes. I'm so grateful for the monastery here. It's been such an amazingly deep, profound and healing place for me. And I've seen the transformation in so many people that have come here. You know, there's like this solid foundation here that I feel is, it really helps us get in touch with who we truly are. And in coming to that, of course, anything that is not that is going to be flushed up. The great thing is here that the reverence and the purpose is so pure that it's safe, you know. It's very safe to allow anything that isn't love to be allowed up in forgiveness. And so, I'm very grateful for the monastery. I'm just so grateful to be able to share about it right now, actually, because it's got a very special place in my heart. It's got a very, it's a very devoted place. Maybe I'll see you sometime here. <laughs> okay, much love. you're looking for, what you're searching for, and you don't have to fix yourself, which is pretty much the mentality of the world. When you see yourself as weary
So this book is really, if you give yourself over to it, that's really what the book is about. It's about coming back to a remembering of who you are. None of us were really told how to go inside. A lot of us read that in different spiritual traditions that uh, you're supposed to search within for the answers. And so I think this book, in one sense, gives you the how. As you begin to open up your mind and open up your heart, then you do get in touch with some pretty intense emotions. And this book is, in that sense, a gentle guide as well to take you down deeper and deeper and deeper. It's been a culmination of about close to 20 years of collaborations that have gone into this book. And some of you who have seen the book know that it's actually three books in one. It's kind of like a trilogy in one. The book really helps with the mind training of starting to realize that everything is, a, is an idea and that ideas leave not their source. And just like Christ could never leave the mind of God, the ideas and everything we perceive in this world as much as it may seem to be out there, isn't really out there. That the, the way the healing occurs is this integration of seeing that every, anything that you're bothered by, anything that you're disturbed by, frustrated by, it's because you're still trying to see it outside of your mind. And the Spirit is gently using this book, and as far as the unwinding, to bring it back to see that you have empowerment, you Actually, your mind contains all the thoughts. looking for continuity in time and what Jesus showed me was that you can't find it. You will never find continuity in time. It's all broken pieces. You, you have to click the switch over to quantum to find continuity, find happiness. It's a new way of thinking. It's a new way of perceiving. You will never look at relationships the same way. You will never look at anything in the world the same way from this quantum perspective. It's, it's... So we're here at Casa Quantico and so this is a residence and basically so you'll have all the coziness of, of having sessions here hmm. and we'll be watching movies down there and we'll have sessions down there. based on inspiration. I guess just want to invite you and just see whether there is a calling or a, a bubbly feeling and, and a spark in your heart to feel, wow, this is something that is calling me. And, and if indeed there is, then let us know because that is a place we can join and allow the spark to turn into a flame. Here it's going to be cozy. There's going to be one-on-ones available, so if you want to go off and a quiet nook somewhere on the property or off into a quiet room and have a one-on-one, -on -one, bring up what's on your heart, expose things, uh, pray together, ask for guidance, all that is available. Just like other training plans that are around the world, this one is actually kind of a very high teacher to 
quote, uh, participant-student ratio. And we just have got our whole community of 30 people and all of us, another 10, ready to join with you. You are perfect right now. Music is a big part of movies too, the soundtrack, you know, sometimes people can almost forget the characters and the storyline because the soundtrack is so good and they, that's what they talk about. Like, oh, I'm going to go get the soundtrack. I, could, I just love the feeling I had during the movie with that, again, that communication, that transmission of music. So that's a huge part for anybody even making a movie is, uh, is the soundtrack and yeah, for good reason. Mm. Yeah. yeah, the more we talk about that, it's like the music being a communication, and it's a communication from love. Mm. And that's why it has such an emotional vibe to it. And yeah, even the soundtrack behind a whole movie, the, the music is the continuity, quite often, yes. of the emotional content to keep, that just brings you into this open-hearted experience all the way through it. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of my early years was spent traveling all over the United States and Canada by car. So when you're traveling thousands and thousands, actually tens of thousands of miles, um, to have that that music playing, that 
it felt like that was the soundtrack. I was singing along, I was immersed, I could be in a car by myself or with others, but I would be totally in the experience of just immersed in the soundtrack, oftentimes participating with the soundtrack, and that that has gone on, you know, over the decades. It's it's gone from like eight tracks to cassettes to CDs and now to MP3 digital music. So over the decades, the soundtrack has continued, and that that's been part of the joy I've experienced with my experience perception of planet Earth is that I have a always have a soundtrack running. Okay, welcome back everyone. Thanks for joining us for LM Virtual today. We're going to take you right over to Anne, who's here in the studio, and she's going to be interviewing Jeff on her show, Come Into the Light. Okay. Hi everyone. I can see myself now. I wondered where I was. <laughs> yeah, um, my name's Anne, and I'd like to introduce Jeff, Wil Jeff Wilbur, my guest today, who's joining us from Peru. Um, many of us know Jeff as just this happy, cheerful master of ceremonies. And today I'm just going to take a little loop behind his journey with Living Miracles and through his many functions. So, yeah, welcome, Jeff. It's great to have you on the show today. It's nice to be here. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd like to ask you a little bit about your background, uh, journey into spirituality, um, when it began, and yeah, how you came to Living Miracles. Quite brief, because we've got a lot of other things to talk about, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> um, so, very briefly, I started... Um, Everything didn't seem to be right for me. I would, um, you know, I loved, I, I, my background is in sales. I was a great salesman and so on and so forth. But, you know, it was never enough. Um, you know, we'd have uh, monthly sales budgets and we'd be a hero on the 30th of the month. And then we were a zero on the first of the month, you know, and it just kept on going in that, in that way. And I just started looking. Um, I, um, I had some, some real anger issues. and. Um, I ended up taking a, um, an eight day intensive retreat um, and it really opened my eyes to, wow, wow, there, this, this is, there's, there's me and there's not me, you know, there's this, there's this, this thing about this, this God thing, this um, other being. And I remember doing an exercise where we, we were to close our eyes and meditate on a candle flame. And, and then this candle flame was to be the Holy Spirit. And then we were to hurl insults and, and, a, and a sword and, and chop this, this flame and just rage up against this flame. And then at the end, I said, now stop. Is that candle still there? And yeah, it was. So I went, oh, okay, so there is something. There is something else there. So that, that led to a number of, of, uh, of things that I looked for self-improvement. I read a lot of shelf improvement books and, and so <laughs> on. Nothing seemed to stick. Um, <laughs> that, yeah, I, I didn't coin that phrase, but I love it, shelf improvement, because all the books sit on the shelf. Um, mm. And in, so one thing led to another, led to another, not by coincidence. Um, I uh, came across this group in, in Langley, British Columbia, which is, I lived on Vancouver Island, and they were on the mainland. And what caught my attention was um, just you know, it was a three-year program and the first year you focused on you and, and healed your own mind before you started to heal others because the idea of this program was you became a counselor. And I thought, that's cool, I, 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 can, I can probably do that. Um, so I started this program and it was based loosely on the teachings of A Course in Miracles. And so I grabbed the book and started reading it and it really caught my attention, really mm -hmm. caught my attention. And, um, you know, I, so I, I was working through this process. It's it's um, uh, a, a place called Clear Mind, where you you know clear your mind, which was yeah. great, um, mm -hmm. and loved it. Uh, really loved it. 
there was one problem. Um, they had to convince me. It took them a year and a half to convince me that my job as a counselor wasn't to give advice. And that was huge because, you know, I had this ability to zero in on someone else's problem and say, here's your problem, now go fix it. And that wasn't received very well <laughs> for some reason. I don't know why that is. Maybe because the answer has to come from within. And I guess I learned that finally. Um, it, took a, it took a while. Um, and then, so I, I finished that program. And then, during, I guess even during that program, um, yeah, I, maybe it was just slightly after. It doesn't, the timing is a little unclear in my mind. But um, one of the ladies that was ahead of me a year was holding a Course in, uh, course in Miracles group meeting. And I, I, I went there quite often. And one day, this smiling angel showed up. Um, I think a lot of you know her, uh, Sarah St. Clair. And um, I just was just enthralled with what she was talking about this community. And I said, okay, I have to have that. Like, I want some of that. And one thing led to another. There was um, a call for volunteers. Um, there, there was a need for someone who did maintenance, like a jack of all trades. And I, I love that. I mean, that's just, I eat that up. So I went down for a weekend and I met uh, Lisa and uh, the weekend went well, I came back and there was an opportunity to come down for three months and that happened. And that was seven, almost eight years ago. Um, I've never, I've never looked back. It, it's been a, a phenomenal journey of healing and it continues. Like it's, it's, it's daily. It's daily. Mm -hmm. I, I remember a parable that Lisa shared about I, I, a bunch of them went to um, Gethsemane um, to um, um, a monastery there uh, for, for silence. And, you know, they spent some time there and she talked to the abbot and was asking a bunch of questions and he had been there for 50 years. And one question she asked was, don't you ever have any doubt thoughts about this path that you're on? And the, the answer that came back shocked me. He said, every day. And I, and I've used that. I've used that because I have doubt thoughts. The doubt thoughts come. And, um, just, just hearing that, and going, okay, so it's just a thought, let it go. And it's the ability to let those thoughts go because doubt thoughts have been with me all my life and they take me out. They, they have taken me out for months sometimes, but that doesn't happen anymore. The doubt thought comes and I, and I feel it and I feel it and then I let it go and say, okay, this isn't for me. This isn't for me. Um, you know, I, I know we talked a little bit about that clip, Stop It, um, with Bob. Yeah. Newhart. Actually, I'm I'm going to play. Um, Are you? Okay. A, yeah, just a shortened version of that because we spoke a lot about, you know, the obstacles that we've moved through, um, each of us, you know, through our functions. And, um, yeah, and sometimes, you know, like the answer seemed really immediate. You know, it was, you know, like often through an elder, but it was, you know, like the experience of, oh, stop it. Actually, I can, you know, whether it's victim... <laughs> Or, you know, we're just angry at the world, whatever it might be. And, uh, yeah, so I just feel like it's a cue to, um, to show that clip now. And you can talk a little bit more into, you know, some of those obstacles that you, you move through. Sure. Okay, so Nicholas, if you're there, if you could play the clip for me, that'd be great. A bit about our, our billing. <laughs> I, um, I charge $5 for the, for the first five minutes. And, and then absolutely nothing after that. How, how, how does that sound? That sounds great. <laughs> Too good to be true, as a matter of fact. <laughs> well, I can I can almost guarantee you that that our session won't last the full uh, the full five minutes. Now, um, <laughs> we don't do any insurance billing, so you would either have to pay in in cash or by check. <clears throat> wow. Okay. And uh, and I I don't make change. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> and go. I have this fear of being buried alive in a box. <laughs> I just, I start thinking about being buried alive and I begin to panic. All right, well, uh, let's go, Catherine. I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, say two words to you right now. I, I want you to listen to them very, very carefully. Then I want you to take them out of the office with you and incorporate them in into your life. Shall I uh, write them down? 
Well, it, if it makes you comfortable, it's just two words. Most we find most people can uh, can remember them. <laughs> okay. You ready? Yes. Okay. Here, here there. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it? Yes. S-T-O-P, new word, I-T. So, what are you saying? <laughs> you, you know, it's funny. I, I, I say two simple words, and I cannot tell you the amount of people who say exactly the same thing you're saying. I mean, this, you know, this is not Yiddish, Catherine. This is English. <laughs> stop it. So, I should just stop it. There you go. All right. Well, what other... Uh, problems would you would you like to address? <clears throat> Whew, uh, I'm bulimic. I stick my fingers down my throat. Stop it! <laughs> what 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 else? <clears throat> well, I have self-destructive relationships with men. Stop it! <laughs> I don't like this. I don't like this therapy at all. You're just telling me to stop it. And and you and you don't you don't like that. No, I don't. All right, then let me uh, let me uh, give you ten words that I I think will uh, clear everything up for you. Uh, you want to you want to get a pad and a pencil for this one? All right. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Here are the ten words. Stop it, or I'll bury you alive in a box. <laughs> Okay, hey, thank you, Nicholas. <laughs> okay, Jeff, uh, you were telling me about um, your experience in the Halo Room. Well, you were building the Halo Room. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and it was an experience of undoing the doer and um, yeah, also hiding behind that particular function. So yeah, can you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> Yeah, we um, we built the hail room. Uh, Michael and I started, I mean, it was just a piece of grass. We marked it out and we poured concrete and did all this wonderful stuff. And um, it was the day before um, David was actually coming back. And so it was the day that it had to be ready. And um, things just weren't going well. And uh, we were running out of tiles and one thing led to another. And I was walking through the courtyard, a lot like Eeyore, you know, head down and and I walked past a room um, that um, Kirsten was sitting in and she waved me into the room and she said, you know, what's happening? And I, I explained that things weren't going quite as Jeff had it planned. And she goes, oh, okay. Well, I think what we're going to do is take you off the project. Off the project, the day before it's finished, you're taking me off. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, I think it's, you know, it, it's, it's, what she said to me was, it's actually the prayer of your heart. And I thought, how in the heck is that possible? And as we're talking, um, a, a, ch a chap walked by the window who, at the time, uh, he and I didn't get all that, we didn't get along that well. And uh, she said, as a matter of fact, and he is going to take the project over. Well, <laughs> you could have blown me over with, a, with your breath. I was thought, you've got to be kidding. My jaw's on the ground. Um, and, you know, so there was a whole bunch of stuff that came up. And in retrospect, it was one of the best things that ever happened to me because it, it undid Jeff. You know, Jeff needed to get the heck out of the way. It doesn't matter if it was six weeks before the project ended or an hour before the project ended. It was incredibly healing. In the moment, no. <laughs> Jeff, was, Jeff was not a happy camper. But in the healing process, it was a, just a huge step. Just a huge step. Yeah, you mentioned something about Lisa coming in. Yeah, and th there's been a, a, a couple of interventions where Jeff needed to be um, <coughs> reminded that he needed to step step back. <laughs> um, we had a group that that met pretty much every morning, and this one morning um, I came in and I wasn't I wasn't really present, and through Lisa the spirit came at me just direct. Um, with all kinds of words of which I actually don't remember. And, um, but it felt like an exorcism. I was literally shaking, like physically, I, I could feel myself, you know, mm -hmm. something was happening inside. 
and, um, and, and I talked to Lisa about it afterwards, and she doesn't remember exactly what she said either. Um, but I do know it was, it was an undoing, a, a very deep undoing. And I've talked about that before, I, you know, to others, where, you know, you get tapped on the shoulder by the spirit and then sort of tapped on the head, maybe given a little push. And then sometimes a two by four comes out. And I'm just so grateful that I'm surrounded by people like Lisa, who has the strength to not take it personally and just, you know, here it is, you know, that's, this is what's necessary. Um, and that happened once at the, um, at the monastery too. We were in the middle of a, a huge um, project putting in um, um, lighting, the, um, uh, what's it called? <laughs> um, solar, solar, we put a, a bunch of solar panels in and it just wasn't working. And again, Eeyore showed up and, um, <laughs> and um, I sat down with Suzanne who was, was uh, was stewarding at the time. And again, spirit came at me and hit me straight between the eyes. And in the moment, I'm thinking, are you kidding me? I'm trying to make, and that was the problem. Jeff was trying to make this work. And um, I had to be reminded of that, you know, quite, uh, quite strongly. But it's, it, it was so healing. You know, in the moment, absolutely not. I, it was like, you know, my world's coming to an end. Uh, but in retrospect, again, it was, it was just necessary healing. And yeah, and I, you know, I, I'm just so grateful to be surrounded by people like those guys and, and others um, who will hold hold the space, whether it needs to be a direct, um, you know, confrontation, if you will, or just to allowing me to express what's going on and hold that uh, hold that space. That's what this community is all about. It really yeah. is about holding that space. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful, Jeff. Thank you so much. And yeah, I can really relate to that experience of, yeah, being hit between the eyes basically by, and it was Kirsten with me. Uh, I was just so in this victim place and I kept going there and going there and going there. And um, yeah, it was just that stop it moment. Um, and I, I don't know what she said. I don't know if she knows what she said, but it was just perfect. It was like, oh, I don't actually have to do that. And I don't have to keep giving myself that pain. It's like, okay. And it's, yeah, it's helped me to start questioning all the areas where I go there, you know, um, is it actually necessary? And this show is a great, <laughs> great teacher of that, you know. Every week I have a meltdown and I was just saying, I'll just share the miracle that this week I didn't melt down. <laughs> it was like, okay, you know, just keep watching those thoughts and keep, keep letting them go. And, you know, if I need to join with anybody, I know that there's somebody available, you know, to hold my hand. And, yeah, just perfect, you know, that um, I've managed to come here without all that, all that drama, you know, that I'm so used to. It's so, it seems to be so embedded. And yet, you know, it's, yeah, as I called it this morning, it's just a big fat lie. It's not true. It's not real. And, uh, you know, we've got the opportunity to gain that experience here because of the elders in the community and those that have walked before us. So, yeah, so I'm grateful for you as well, Jeff, for that. And, uh, yeah. You know, just just seeing you light up the shows. You know, when you come on the um, online retreats and everything that you do, really. So, I just wondered if you'd like to talk a little bit about why you're in Peru, and you know what you actually do. You know, to keep your spirit up because you're not here in in community. You're kind of outreach now, and um, you know, I've got the opportunity to express every day, and I don't know how it is for you. So, yeah. Yeah. Well. It's no different. Um, <clears throat> there's been so many teachings over the years, but David said something a number of years ago when I was at the monastery. Um, uh, I had this thing about religions and churches. And in that particular moment, um, it was decided the community needed to become a church for a number of reasons. And there was this email that came out saying that, well, you, I went, you have got to be kidding me. I am not being part of something that's called a church. That's just not going to happen. Okay. And, um, and David did a, a Sunday service um, and he talked, he was talking about different things and he said something and it was for me, it was so perfect. He said, church is a state of mind. And I went, oh, okay. 
that's interesting. And it changed my whole perspective um, about that. So being in Peru, why am I here? I mean, it, it was a miracle. It was absolutely, uh, I, I mean, I knew, I knew nothing about Peru. Um, part of what I'm, what I'm doing right now is, is, is looking over, overlooking um, uh, transforming or translating MMT, this wonderful program that I absolutely adore, into mm -hmm. Spanish. And there's a couple of folks here that said, yeah, they put their hands up and said, we'd love to help you. And um, so I called them uh, to find out about the internet because it's kind of important to have internet. I'm thinking, come on, they're up 8,000 feet in the Andes. How good can the internet be? Well, it's really good. <laughs> so we had, this, we had this 35 minute call and by the end of the call, it was, they said, we think you should come. And I said, I think I should. For, for no earthly reason. I mean, I could have done this from Mexico. So I, you know, I sort of said, well, let me talk to, to the others and see what happens. Fully anticipating, Jeff was, you know, in the way going, oh, they're, they're just going to laugh at me. You know, this is not going to happen. Well, I talked to them and they said, go, please. This is, this is guidance. This is a, a prompt. And so within two weeks of the phone call, I'm landing in Peru and now sitting here in this uh, a place called the Sacred Valley, um, working on, on MMT. So, you know, how do I stay connected? Well, the, the teaching of David, you know, that everything is a state of mind. Well, community, connection is a state of mind. And so what do I do? I love emceeing those shows. I mean, it, it's just a joy to watch everyone join and how intimate those things are. And I've always loved this idea of, of this virtual communication. Uh, and we, we were doing a lot of it before it really became, you know, um, easy to do. Some of the technology was ridiculous <laughs> in the early days trying to set up these virtual shows. Now with Zoom, I mean, it's, it's a piece of cake. So, you know, I extend. I extend on Saturdays through, through um, uh, the Miracle Movies, which everybody's welcome to join. Um, you can look at events, Living Miracles Teachers, and, and you'll see the, 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 the movie session there every Saturday at 12. Uh, Central Daylight Time, but it's the extension through that that keeps me connected. Uh, for example, yesterday we watched a movie called A Monster Calls. If you haven't seen A Monster Calls, please, please go and watch that movie. It's a phenomenal movie about a little boy who, who creates a monster in his mind to help him deal with his mother's dying. And, um, and Liam Neeson is the voice of the monster. It's just a beautiful, beautiful, we had a a 45 minute joining after the movie with everyone bringing up what, what was coming up for them and, and how, you know, how, how perfect timing it was for different people, which always happens with the movies. What was the well, name of the movie, Jeff? It's called, it called, it's called A Monster Calls. A, monster. I, a monster Calls, yeah. And it needs Thank to you. be renamed. It, it actually needs to be renamed because what it was is a spirit, is that spirit calls. And, and I'll leave that with you. I won't tell you any more because I don't want to yeah. spoil the, the effect. But, you know, and, and that, that there's the joining. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm one with everyone virtually on the screen. It was, that's, that's kind of what happens. Um, and it, it is, is in the extension. It is in the extension. Um, and I was, just, I was actually thinking about that this morning, thinking about, you know, what am I going to say on the show? And, and all I heard was, you know, it does, you don't have to think about anything. It, it's going to happen spontaneously in the moment. Um, and, and that really is, is what happens. It is, it all, it is all spontaneous. And, and this morning I was thinking, you know, about more. Do I have to say more and more and more? And as soon as I, I hear that now, you know, this idea, there must be some more. Um, I'm in the ego mind and I just let it go. I just, I stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop that thought and, and just let it go. Yeah. Beautiful, yeah. Yeah, and I know you've got Jenny and Greg um, coming, yeah. so yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that as well? Yeah, it's exciting. Um, they're coming, um, they'll be here <clears throat> the 24th of, of May. We're having a, um, a, a retreat in Lima, um, uh, basically on relationships, which is beautiful. I mean, they're they're a, a beautiful demonstration of, um, of, you know, moving from that idea of special relationship to a holy relationship. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to come up to the, um, the sacred valley where I am <clears throat> and um, 
tentatively, we've got three gatherings that are going to happen. And, and there may be more, I don't know. Um, you know, it's beautiful, I don't know. And the, the Jeff is going, if I listen to the Jeff, he's going, oh, you gotta be kidding, what do you mean you don't know? And um, yeah, and, and that was, what's, what's coming on my mind, I just have to, I can't remember the word that I wanna use. Um, let me, oh yeah. So, you know, we just, we just heard about uh, Lila and Lila and I had a, an amazing relationship. There was a huge amount of projection of me onto her and, and the healing that took place was magnificent. And so here I am trying to plan something and it, 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 it's, it, you know, I don't know exactly what's going to happen. And uh, Lila and I were working uh, together. Uh, I was working uh, you know, with her on Strawberry Festival years ago and um, if we didn't know something, Lila would say, it's, it's, it's in the undefined. And it used to drive me crazy. What do you mean it's undefined? We have to know, we're planning. And she broke me of that habit. And so it's made it so much easier now to help plan these retreats for, um, for Jenny and Craig because it is, a lot of it is undefined. And it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> so thank you, Lila. And, and I know Calico was saying, no, she's, she's here. You know, she hasn't gone anywhere. I truly feel that because, you know, as I'm doing this planning, that voice keeps coming back. It's <laughs> undefined. It's undefined. I'm like, okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, we've just got a few minutes, Jeff. So is there anything else that you'd really, that's on your heart that you'd like to talk about? Because I'm unplanned as well, <laughs> which is very unusual. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, I will say, you know, the, 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 uh, I just, it, it's all in retrospect. Um, the, the healing that's taken place for me, there's no way seven years ago I would have ever imagined uh, being where I am today. And I don't mean physically, I mean in the mind. Um, yeah. It's just been a, an incredible roller coaster. There, there's no other way to put it. Uh, you know, the highs and, 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 and the lows. But it, what's happening, what's happening, especially now here that I'm in Peru, is there's this, this leveling out. Um, you know, there, there aren't these super high moments and super low moments anymore, but it's all, it's all enjoyable. And I bring it back into the joy. I, and it's not to say that there aren't times when it's like, ooh, you know, the Eeyore uh, character, you know, gets in, but it, it doesn't last long anymore. It really doesn't. Um, it's, it, it, it's so ingrained in my mind now that it's just a thought. Mm -hmm. let it go you know yeah. in fact there's almost a mantra now when a, when a thought comes in like that is uh what comes to me what's come to me is it just doesn't matter which mm -hmm. makes it much easier to let it go and um so the yeah it's, it's definitely this this leveling out of, of those emotions not the highs and the lows and just this beautiful um peaceful path you know, I mean, I'm sitting here right now talking to you, looking out into the Andes Mountains, going, wow, you know, do I, do I need more? And, and, and if I start to think I need more, that's when things start to you know, come off track. So, and I love what, um, uh, what Dan was saying with Michael, you know, Michael's a beautiful teacher. And I love that idea of, you know, bring it back, bring it back to the center and, you know, get out of the future, get out of the past and, and be here in the present moment. It's, um, it's a beautiful mantra, it really is, and it works, it truly does. And when it doesn't, then I get in to stop it, and I laugh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it becomes, rather than judging myself and getting, you know, down on myself about, you know, going one side or the other of the vertical, it just comes back in laughter, and it, you know, it's, it's a beautiful remembrance of, you know, where the Son of God remembered not to laugh, that was the tiny, you know, tiny mad idea. So it's just nice to bring everything back to laughter. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Jeff. That's been absolutely amazing. And uh, yeah, that's really just a reflection of my journey as well. You know, that I'm learning, you know, like how to bring everything back and stop it. And, um, and it has been quite a journey. And yeah, I'm just grateful for everybody that's 
that's showing me the way and um, yeah grateful for you Jeff you know I've been part of the MMT and that's where I came in and um, you actually phoned me one time early on when I was totally spinning out of control and it was just so beautiful that that you knew somehow and uh, yeah just so helpful thank you so much and thank you everybody that's watching the show and uh, yeah incredible thank you okay <laughs> Bye. Bye. <for> now. Bye. <laughs>
took any step to turn off or turn on the switch and they will just watch the switch. And I, I found that it interesting and I knew it hit in me in some way and I didn't really knew what it was. And this morning it was very obvious also what was happening and what I felt was happening a lot throughout this journey. And um, precisely what was happening was that after I received the invitation to be here and uh, share about uh, what I just shared about the, the houses, uh, I could see that I was willing, but I wasn't really taking any steps. And I was waiting for other people to tell me what to do and when and how. So I, I got in touch with this fear of taking a step because there will come a sense of responsibility and uh, I, I feel this fear of, I felt this fear of that I could mess things up or that it will be too much to, to handle, that I will be too much exposed. So yeah, I just thought it could be interesting if Jason, you, you will have any thoughts around this pattern that seems to, to happen in the mind. I, I think you, you described it quite well. You just were afraid to come on the show and express this opportunity. And, and we just want everyone to feel like, yeah, the purpose of our ministry is really to provide opportunities to meet the mind, to just go deeper at a pace that it can handle. And we, Jackie, who's online, she just joined for this, and Raphael, Susanna is over here, and I, we've been working on this for about a month, putting together all these beautiful pictures and find this website called Love Home Swap. We signed up for a whole year and because of Jeffrey's got this house and another house and we have one that will be used for three months as most of us go up to, um, not most of us, but I don't know, maybe a quarter of the community are going up to uh, Strawberry Fields Festival in Utah for July, August, September, maybe even a little bit of June. We want these houses to be fully used in purpose and with this love home swap, you can actually take your house and swap with us at exactly the same time. And we go to your house and you come to our house, but it's pretty rare that you're gonna get people that wanna come here at the exact time we wanna go there. So you can actually do this point swap and you can sign up for yourself on love home swap, come here and use points to get our places. And then we use those points to travel around the world and keep extending the message. So. And if you're not into that, there is rental options. And of course, Airbnb, we're going to put it out as well. But we just thought this is really cool. The Spirit's going to make this available in a much greater way for people to come in, come to our Saturday evening gatherings and watch movies like we watched last night and have a lot of fun. So. Yes, exactly. Every uh, Saturday um, evening, there's uh, movies that are shown. So everybody that rents or ex exchange the house will have uh, direct invitation to attend those uh, movie <laughs> gatherings. So we just wanted you to be the first to know and use one of our breaks to put it out there. You'll see it on Facebook and now you know what it is. Share with your friends. It's just a welcome invite for the summer to come down to the area and get a little taste of Chapala and, and Living Miracles. So we'll pass that back over to uh, Kristen and thanks Raphael for Thank you, Jason. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Very cool. Very cool. So you actually have the opportunity to come rent this house and stand and sit and live right where we are right now in the studio. And um, of course, there's just a lot of happenings. There's our Saturday night movie gatherings, as Jason mentioned. So really uh, a lot of amazing opportunities to stay linked with the community. So. Oh, Michael's here with a. <laughs> <laughs> plug for the uh, quantum immersion retreat. So May 24th through the 28th. This is good. I have to tell you about this. So we have this quantum immersion retreat happening May 24th through the 28th. And um, we're going to be, you know, pretty focused on that down here. It's going to be um, here on the ground and many of us will be involved in it, including our tech teams. So very important. We won't be having our LM virtual shows on Sunday it's May 27th, and then the following week we've got this devotional or um, this online retreat, the development of trust and devotion that you've been hearing about. So, 
mark your calendars. We won't be having our LM virtual shows on May 27th or June 3rd. Okay, well, um, we've got just a few more minutes here before we go live again with Emily and the Song of Prayer. So stay tuned. We're going to show you how to wake up with movies using MWGE. What we know about the mind is that it doesn't differentiate between the emotions it experiences while watching a movie and the emotions it experiences in day-to-day -day life. And that's how we're able to heal our mind with movies. You first want to pick a movie to watch that supports your spiritual awakening. You can do that using the Emotion Theme Index located under the Reviews drop-down menu. All of the movie reviews on MWGE are indexed by the emotions and main healing themes in the movie. At the top of the index page, we see the eight main index categories of reviews. I have a block that I'm ready to remove from my life. I click on that category and I'm shown all of the block's topics. My issue is that I feel like a victim of the world and I'm ready to heal that belief. I click on Victimization and I'm shown all of the reviews that have victimization as one of the healing topics covered in that movie. At this point, I'm able to browse through the movie reviews. I'm feeling a resonance with the movie Black Swan, so I first want to obtain the movie from a streaming video or DVD rental service. I also want to download the Mind Tools for use during the movie. I can find the Mind Tools under the Getting Started drop-down menu. When I'm ready to watch the movie, I'll read the review first. This helps me to stay focused on the movie's healing themes rather than getting lost in the storyline. Attack it! Come on! While watching Black Swan, I notice upsetting emotions come up when I see the main character, Nina, hurting herself. The upset is my cue to pause the movie and fill out a Mind Tool. If I can fill out a worksheet when I'm feeling the upset, I have a much better chance of getting it off the perceptual screen where I'm in reaction mode and back into my mind where I can look at what the upsetting emotions are, what the upsetting thoughts are, and what the underlying beliefs are. Beneath all that is the desire to have something different than it is. If I can get down to that place in my mind where I can see that I'm desiring something other than peace, then I can choose again. And the miracle is that I can call upon Spirit to help me make that choice for present peace. The Instrument for Peace is another downloadable worksheet that takes you step by step through the process of clearing upsetting emotions. It's especially helpful if you have difficulty or feel resistance moving through any level of the mind when taking an upset back. While filling out a worksheet, you may also uncover other limiting beliefs, so you'll want to fill out as many worksheets as necessary until you feel complete. The power of using these mind tools with the movie reviews on MWGE is that it saves time in the awakening process. Rather than playing out painful dramas in your life, you can simply let the characters on the screen do it for you. With all of the subscription plans, you get the written movie reviews and the mind tools. With the ProPop subscription, you also get audio and video setups with many of the movie reviews so that you can go even deeper into the healing themes. With the MasterPop subscription, you also get our library of streaming metaphysical movie classics with commentary, as well as hundreds of clips highlighting the key healing scenes in movies. If you're ready to add some fun to your spiritual practice, subscribe by going to MWGE.org. MWGE is movie watching with a purpose. You know that it's, it's so far beyond the personal. And yet, while you believe in the personal and you're opening your heart to this vast love, the words and the symbols can reach your heart in helpful ways. There's really nothing.
nothing but just beautiful, pure simplicity that's always just what is. The truth is simple. The present moment is simple. While you still have connotations and meaning and interpretations around it, then words like scarcity and lack and funds and so on and so forth, it's, it's really being in the gratitude so fully that everything else just fades from awareness. You know, a lot of times people think of spirituality or spiritual journey as like, be happy and, you know, you, you can't consistently be happy until you get in touch with what's unhappy. Welcome back, everybody. So we were just a few minutes late, but well, that's because we have something pretty amazing coming up next, and we're just setting up. So yeah, so we have um, the Song of Prayer with Emily, and Susanna's supporting with the guitar. So I think I'll just take it, send it over to Emily. Well, welcome to the Song of Prayer. Um, I'm joined with Susanna to start off the show. Uh, we were feeling to, to sing a song. We're going to sing Jesus Culture's song, Show Me Your Glory. And we hadn't planned on singing this song, actually. We, we've only run through it a few times and it didn't feel ready. But Susanna said to me this morning that she had a dream that we sang this song on my show and we, it, it was flawless. <laughs> so, um, we said, well, let's just try it and see how it feels. So we played it this morning and it wasn't flawless in form, but, we, <laughs> but we've just felt really, really good singing it. It just felt like, yeah, there was this beautiful vibe with it. And I think we just wanted to, to go with that and, and allow the form not to be perfect, but just, yeah, sing this song that brings us into the presence. And for me, this song is just really a love song to God. So. I see the cloud I step in I want to see your glory like Moses did Flashes of light and rolls of thunder, but I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Show me your glory, show me your glory, oh God, show me your glory, show me your glory. Moored by your beauty, 
lost in your eyes. I long to walk in your presence like Jesus did. Your glory surrounds me. And I'm overwhelmed But I'm not afraid I'm not afraid Show me your glory Show me your glory, oh God. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. I long to look on the face of the one that I love, long to stay in your presence. It's where I belong, long to look on the face of the one that I love, long to stay in your presence. It's where I belong. where I belong. Show me your glory. Show me your glory, oh God. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Yeah, getting a little bit of a shake. Yeah, I feel like over the past few months, I've just feel, felt like there's been this, this huge expansion for me. And um, it seems to be after saying yes and stepping in, first of all, to, to doing these shows and also with, um, with getting in touch in a deeper way with, with my calling, with music. And it seems like they both kind of came in at the, around the same time, um, started doing these shows. And then I had this experience with watching the Hillsong movie with David and the community here. And I shared a bit about that on, on a previous show, um, just what a heart opening experience that was for me. Just felt like, something ignited in me when I was watching that movie. Um, this feeling like there was something much bigger than me, like something huge that, that wanted to, wanted to. <laughs> that, that wanted to come through and, um, And yeah, I, I, I feel like the same thing is happening for me with these shows. Um, every time I have a show, so every two weeks, the days leading up to it, I, I've been experiencing like this real intensity. And um, 
yeah, everybody who lives with me in the house here <laughs> knows that it's like a lot of emotion has been coming up for me and this feeling of um, this intense pressure in the mind. And um, yesterday, I, it was really coming up a lot, just like a lot of emotion and a lot of fear. And uh, just noticing the thoughts, the, um, the ego thoughts that were coming in were, you don't have... Um, You don't have anything real to share. You know, there's, you, you don't have anything to offer. And feeling like I wasn't able to get in touch with a real place to be able to speak from. And each time I do this show, or even the thought of this show, it feels like there's actually a magnifying glass on me. And um, yeah, any kind of hiding that's, that's there, any, any hiding in my mind or wanting to be hidden it's like it's being exposed and it's like the lights are on and for these 30 minutes it's like something um yeah I, I have to be real i can't sit here for 30 minutes and speak about something that doesn't feel real for me and i actually feel like the intensity that's been coming up is um is the terror around that, the terror of actually getting in touch with that on a consistent basis and feels like it's the same thing with the singing. In order for me really to get in touch with the singing, I have to get in, in touch with something that's, that's not of me, like something that's real. And I was praying about this this morning and this realization came into my mind that, yeah, there's, there's this light, there's this strength that is always there and um there's a fear of truly connecting with it because if i connect with it then i can no longer say that i'm a victim of this world i can no longer say that i'm at the, the effect of anything and just seeing very strongly in my mind that there's a victim identity that is who i think i am and it's what i operate on and it's there seems to be like some sense of in that i know who i am um and in order to to connect with something that's that's real something that's beyond that i have to let go of that and in that it's like well who am i And um, I'm, I'm really seeing like the contrast experience, like that intensity that's coming up for me around the show. It's like for 30 minutes, I, I have to be transparent. I have to be real and to see how much I, I don't do that actually in, in my life every day. And like living in this community, I feel like everything is focused towards being transparent. And there's, you know, so much opportunity to share what's, like the thoughts or the feelings, like whatever is going on, that's what we're joining in. And I really thought that I was doing that. Um, but this contrast experience of being here in front of the camera and seeming like there's no, um, there's nothing to hide behind. I'm seeing that actually I compromise a lot on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't, um, truly share my heart and it's not it's not really just with everybody else it's with myself I am um, there's something that I deny on a on a daily basis and um, I'm pretending to be something else pretending to maintain this self-concept which is really what hiding is so that was that was pretty amazing when I, when I saw that this morning and then it just seemed to, I could see how it was, tra how it transferred to everything like with, um, with singing as well. There's getting in touch with, there's something that wants to come through and, um,
Yeah, I've just gone blank. So I'm just going to wait for it to come back. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, with the singing, um, feels like the, the prompt has been coming in over the last few months for me to write like some opera music. And initially I, I, um, I dismissed it, you know, just pushed away. Oh, I, I couldn't possibly do that. But it has, yeah, it, it's been coming in stronger and stronger. And I did actually start to put my mind in the direction of maybe writing something. I had a joining with Francis and she said, well, maybe you could write something for the documentary and I could feel all this inspiration with it. So I, um, I started putting my mind towards writing opera and uh, I would have this experience where all this inspiration would, would come in and uh, I, would, I would start to hear things in my mind and would feel so vibrant and so I would start working on the song and I would feel great about it. And then a few hours later, all this doubt would come up in my mind and I would dismiss everything that had come through and um, yeah, just a lot of darkness and doubt thoughts were coming up. And um, yeah, I, uh, one afternoon I just, I, I, there was, I was had a lot of emotion coming up around it and I, I joined with Jason about it and I just said to him, is, is this really what I'm supposed to be doing? Because I just feel like there's a hopelessness in my mind or just this, this feeling like I, I, I can't do it. And he said to me, um, yes this is this is truly what's given and you know at one point you made a decision unconsciously to to say no to this to turn away from from actually looking at this part of your mind because i had for many years you know gone in that direction of pursuing a, a career as an opera singer and um and the unworthiness and the doubt got so strong i couldn't move through it and i so i went in a totally different direction and i and I think I did made, make a decision. I'm never going to look there again. And um, yeah, he just said to me that this is actually the start of you turning back around and facing what you said you would never face. And it's just flushing up um, all, of, all of this unworthiness and this doubt. So I was having this, this contrast experience of all this inspiration and then, and then the, the flip side of it. But I feel like I'm being shown that the spirit has um, always has a way out. There's the spirit's plan is is solid, and if it's and and if there wasn't a way out, it wouldn't be the spirit's plan. So I I when I was kind of going through this 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 doubt, and I felt like I was getting locked up, and I wasn't able to to move forward with the music. I um I actually said to Jason, well, can I just sing for you what I've got so far? I had all these lyrics coming in and just some melodies. And I, so I went over and I, I sang it for him. And I just said, I, you know, I feel it's the start of something, but it's not, I don't fully feel my heart is opening up with it. It's like, I'm not connected in a deep way with it. And, and he said, well, what about if we just maybe listen to some music that, um, that just has a vibe, like, like a feeling and, and get in touch with, with, with that feeling and let it, let something come from that. And I felt great about that just kind of, because that's, that's what I want. I want the music to re really come from my heart and not about, and not have it about just trying to, um, create, create a song. So we started listening to, um, these, this music, he had a, he has an audio box account and himself and Francis had gone through and just picked out some, some music that they felt really inspired about by and possibly we're going to use it for the documentary and so we started listening to to um this this music and i i um i took out my lyrics and i had about six different songs written but i wasn't put to music yet and when i would feel something with one of the with one of the songs i would just try out some of my lyrics and it, it was amazing i some of the songs would just like fit perfectly. I would just hear the song and then I would sing, sing the lyrics, just be improvising and it would just line up perfectly. And it was in this effortless way that I, I felt like I wasn't actually doing anything. It was really, it was, it was just coming through without any conscious effort. And then we would go to another song and I would 
try some of my lyrics and then it wouldn't work. The lyrics wouldn't fit with that particular song. I was like, okay, that one, that, that's not given. Let's try another one. And it was actually amazing because it was being revealed to me in this process that I wasn't writing anything. It was like these songs were already written and I had to just trust the feeling of something that was flowing, something that was coming through in an involuntary way and, and go with that. And then when it wasn't flowing, okay, it's a different direction. And in about half an hour, there was the beginning of about six songs that I, I still need to work on and I feel like they need to be polished. But all of the lyrics I had written were matched with this music. And um, yeah, it was just... It was just very inspiring to see how it unfolded. Um, but I, these songs weren't actually opera that I was singing. It was just, I was just singing like my normal, regular voice. And I, but I still had this prayer that I wanted something to come through, like some opera to come through. And um, we started listening to some classical music just to get in the vibe and something just wasn't flowing with that. So Jason had this idea, why don't, why don't we listen to some dance music and, and see what comes from that? And that was kind of like an idea that came totally from left field for me. I thought, well, I never put those two things together. I've always thought of opera singing as all, always being classical and then the idea of putting it with dance music. But we said, well, let's just go for it. So put on the track and it just kind of dancing to it and just really felt the vibe. And, and the next thing I just spontaneously started singing and just allowed whatever wanted to come through. And it was amazing. I just, I started to feel that deep feeling of connection that I had been looking for in what I was writing, but it was in this effortless way that I was really doing nothing. It was just in the moment, spontaneous um, sounds coming through. Sometimes there were words, sometimes there were no words. But it was just, it was being revealed to me in the moment. And I could just see in that, that the spirit, you know, had, has a plan and there's always a way to, to move forward. But if I stay stuck in my, my past ideas of how it's supposed to be, and I'm, I'm coming from the past, there's like nothing fresh in that. So it was just, yeah, it just felt like a miracle for me that something so new could open up and I could see that it didn't come from my past reference. So yeah, with that in mind, I, I felt like I would actually like to, to sing some of that um, for you today. I, <laughs> yeah, just actually put the dance track on and um, to improvise over it with a, uh, <laughs> with some opera and um, just kind of see what comes through. I know that Zoom isn't really built to, um, to play backing tracks and everything, so I'm not really sure what the sound quality is going to be like, but I feel like my practice and my lesson at the moment is really to just follow the inspiration and follow what feels alive for me in the moment and just trust that that's what's going to be, fe going to be felt and that's what's going to be transmitted and it's not going to be... Um, yeah, it's not really about the form, so yeah, <laughs> gonna see what happens. How do I move this down a bit? <clears throat> Give me a moment. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. 
everyone. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Good <you>. Lord, wow. <laughs> it's, it's very powerful and you're in the studio like I'm sure like whatever that is is translating so beautifully to you guys and just being here in the studio is like I think we're speechless is what we're trying to say. <laughs> oh, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Emily. <laughs> well, I don't know that there's much more to say about that. <laughs> so please join us again in um, almost 15 minutes for Jeffrey and Frank with The Last Step. The biggest block for really allowing your voice to come out is trying to sound good and trying to sing. Um, so when I sing now and when I, when I lead groups or I do one-on-one -on -one singing sessions with people, I really try as much as I can to get them to step out of the idea that they're, they need to sound good or they they need to perform and actually get in touch with something that's deeper. The best thing in this exercise is to not delay because when you don't even know the cushion's coming towards you, and you see it coming towards you and you hear a note, as much as you can just sing the note without any thought process, because I can tell you that thoughts are what blocks the voice coming out. So we want to minimize any thinking. We want to just keep in the it going. In the choir, I will refer to that a lot where 
I just ask people to, to whether it's to close their eyes or just to, to really get in, in touch with the sound that wants to come out and, um, and let that feeling lead the way as opposed to any kind of judgment on how anything, how anything sounds. So when we're, when we're singing as a group together, if everybody can even just tune into the one sound that's being created by the whole group singing together, it takes the focus off the personal self that, you know, is trying to do it. Actually singing is, it's like a metaphor even for A Course in Miracles because the Course is um, a pathway in letting go of the blocks to love's awareness. You know, love is not something that that we are taught or that we learn, it's who we are. And there's all of these blocks and beliefs that are in the way. So the path of the course is to, to see all of those blocks and let them go so we can get in touch with who we truly are. And I see the voice as being the same thing. We're all born with this natural voice. Everybody has a voice. So it's not about learning to sing. It's a process of unlearning. It's letting go of all the ways we try and control the voice, everything we try to do to create the sound, fully letting go of that and then letting this pure sound just flow through and there's really nothing that we need to do in that. It all, it, it's something that just happens by itself. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the kind of feeling we're going for in everything that we're singing, just this really, really intimate sound. Whether it's a really upbeat piece and it's loud and we're dancing, or whether it's like a, a very prayerful song, it's like you still want to have that intimate, connected feeling throughout. I feel like something else is doing it. The spirit is doing it. It's kind of, I don't have to work anything out. I just, I hear a thought or I feel an energy or something is just happening and, um, and I'm just allowing it to move through and it is so joyful. And the experience is that at the end of it, I'm, I'm more energized. It doesn't take anything from me. It just gives to me over and over. So, um, so that's not just in music and in singing. That's how you know, I live my life and I feel like everybody in this community lives their life, or at least we're practicing to live in that way. Um, and singing is just a, a, a great way for me to practice. <laughs>
everyone. So obviously that was beautiful um, with Emily sharing and just like the power of it. And um, I just wanted to share an experience that I'm having now, just very briefly before taking it over to Jeffrey with the last step. Like the, the purpose of these shows is really for nothing other than the healing of the mind. And um, I'm just experiencing with, with just that really raw display of like the stepping through the fear, just the whole parable Emily shared about what it's been like for her to walk through the unworthiness and, and the fear to just continue following her calling. I, I feel like it, it just brings up that which, like that kind of display of um, devotion to the spirit just brings, brings these things up into our awareness that will continue to allow us to do that too. So I just feel like as a very real life, right now in this moment demonstration of what this is actually for it's for the flushing and the purification of our mind and and so i'm just i'm very grateful for these shows and for the opportunity when you know two minutes until you're on and i'm like wipe the tears away it's like, okay okay this is my opportunity to do that then too and um yeah just show up in a what feels like a very raw way for me vulnerable so again thank you and um Without further ado now, we'll take it over to Jeffrey and Frank for the last step. Thank you, Kristen. Hello, everyone out there. And hello, Frank. I have Frank joining me today up from Camus. He's been up there for about a week and a half now, but hopefully on his way back soon, maybe, maybe tomorrow. But yeah, I wanted to, uh, it's been a few weeks since I've been on and yeah. Actually, what Kristen is sharing is pretty, pretty deep to my heart as well. I, uh, I felt so good all day, and then we had a bit of, uh, I had some technical difficulties trying to communicate with Jeff and Nicholas. And when we do music, there's an original sound setting so that we can hear the sound; otherwise, it sounds awful to the listener. And somehow, we're live streaming this actually on Facebook, of course, a Miracles Facebook page. And somehow, that messed up our setting. So I was sitting there, and all this responsibility came onto my mind and. Of course, what happened is I wanted to project it out. Emily didn't give me this stuff in time and all this stuff, you know, came up and I sat with it. And actually, you know, I do these processes in my mind now, the spirit and the instrument for peace. And that's a bit actually what we were talking, we were going to talk about today, me and Frank. You know, I had come from 12 steps and the fourth step is actually the turnaround step. You know, if you talk Byron Katie's work or any of it. And the fourth step for me, the first time I got to it. So the first step, of course, is powerlessness. And the principle for the first step is honesty. The second step is hope. When we come to find, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. And then the third step we've talked about for a few weeks, which is this decision to turn our will over. And that's the faith step. But the fourth step is the courage. That's the, the spiritual principle for the fourth step is courage. You know, in the course, they talk about the fear to look within and, looking within. And this is a step that a lot of people, even in 12 step programs, they turn and run at that point. They all, you know, you, 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 the two steppers, we call them two steppers that come in and do one, two, one, two, one, two, they call it the shuffle, the two step, step shuffle. Because once we get to that point of letting go of this idea that someone out there is to blame, then I actually have to turn around and look within. And I remember I was anxious because I'd had an experience, which I shared on this show. I was anxious to get to the fourth step. And my practice was actually patience with it because my first sponsor had me, you know, go through it. But it's always a good idea because you can't do this step wrong. Like you can't do a spirit wrong if you're actually asking spirit and you're inviting it in to actually look at your own mind. You can't really do it wrong. But the tools that we have with spirit and instrument for peace and of course, what I'm talking about today is the four step and it's made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. So, you know, the fearless part was, is, is the part that I have to look at these, the end of the step book, it actually says, if we've done this correctly, we swallowed some huge chunks about ourselves that we were unaware of because there's so much, there's so many layers to it. And this goes on, this continues for a lifetime. You know, I do these things over and over. And the first time I did a four step it took me weeks, you know, to actually write the names down, you know, I'm going to have Nicholas share a screen uh, in a few minutes, but the first thing is resentments because there's three inventories we take in a 12 step for program and it's the resentment inventory because resentment is what actually makes a lot of us drink or use or do those things because we have this 
I'll show you when we end up hurting ourselves is what the, what the process looks like. But the first column is actually the who we, and when we take this process, we're actually supposed to not go across, we go down, we write all the people that we have resentments with and whether the ones from the past, and it could be institutions, it could be anything, you know, my high school, I went to a Catholic high school, I had a ton of resentments towards them. And I had to look at all those things, you know, and certainly the bigger ones on my list, father and, you know, and those ones and certain friends. But after we write all those people, the first time I actually was going to look at this, I had nobody. I was like, I don't resent really anyone. Like I was so, so much in denial that I think I didn't really hate anyone. And then I quickly realized I hated everybody for something, <laughs> something I hated everybody for. So after you write that down, the second column, actually maybe Nicholas, you can show that. Uh, I, I just printed one page of what we, I actually give to people in the program and 12 step programs to show them. And the first column is that I'm resentful at a person. And I actually write all those people down on the left-hand side. And then the second column is the cause. What am I resentful at them for? Why am I angry? Or, you know, this in the spirit process is what am I feeling? And I actually have to go to specifics because we need to use specifics. This always happens with spiri and all this. This The courage to look within. Sometimes I'll have an upset and I go to it quickly because I know the benefit of, of it now. But originally it was like, I don't want to do that, you know? And this second column is why I'm angry. I have to have a specific because if I use broad strokes, the ego's just going to use metaphysical ghosting and all this stuff to go over it. But I have to use a specific. I'm angry because... Emily didn't give me the stuff on time. You know, that was what it looked like in my mind before I turned it around, you know, this morning. And then this next column was the most beneficial. And this I still use in my mind. Again, originally this took me three weeks. Now this takes me seven seconds, you know, because I practice it over and over. But this next part is what part of self was hurt. And so in the program, we talk about seven parts of self and these build up our self-concept. So this, these columns actually help me get in touch with what the belief is, because I often get caught up on the belief level in spirit. Sometimes I'll get to it and I don't want to look at it or I don't know what it is. And I go back to this process. Like what part of myself is hurt? Is it my self-esteem? And what self-esteem is what I think of myself? Is it my pride? What others think of me? And let me tell you, the first time I did that, everything I did, those first two columns were checked. <laughs> I asked my husband, am I doing this wrong? He's like, no, this is what you're doing it right. And then we have the, uh, we have ambitions, you know, things I want, you know, I want my own little plans and designs, things I want to happen. You know, we have our pocketbook, desire for personal wealth, property, prestige even, which is more an ambition. Then we have emotional security, a basic sense of my own well-being. Any one of these areas with any resentment is touched on. And that's when I feel this, you know, this huge restriction or whatever, you know, it feels like in the moment. And the last one is, well, we have personal relations, which is is it affecting my relations with other people? And then the last one is sex relations, which is basically my desire for physical intimacy. And anytime I have an upset and I think I'm angry for something, I guarantee you, because I've been through a lot of them, <laughs> that they fall in one of these categories. And when I'm able to check that box or I do it in my mind and say, oh, it's affecting this, there's a belief behind it, whether it's sex relations, oh, someone shouldn't hit on my girlfriend or whatever the thought is, a belief is generated from there, whether it's my pride is always affected. People shouldn't lie to me or people shouldn't treat me that way. People should give me their things on time. Whatever it is, it is affected in that way and it helps me get in touch with that belief. And then, of course, in the fourth column, which in 12 steps, it's, you know, what was the nature, you know, of my wrong? Because where was I to blame? And again, this is where we had talked about before that in 12 steps, it can get caught up in the behavioral level, like thinking that there was something wrong. But for me, I had to go through this process because there was a lot of things I believed I did wrong. And I shared on my first show, you know, a lot of it had to do with things that I didn't do. You know, like I shared about my mother and father and cousin, best friends. I didn't allow them to love me. You know, that was actually one of the things that was really strong for me. I wouldn't let people do that. But in that last column, I can actually check where I was selfish, dishonest, afraid, whatever it is. And then when I can look at that, I can see what part I had in it and I can let that go. But a lot of times for the ones I did, I, there wasn't even a part where I can say, where was I to blame? A lot of times the blame was I was holding on to the belief. In the third column, I was holding on to this concept that, no, this shouldn't happen. You know, and I shared again on my first show, I think I may have shared about this woman that blew the doors open to the step when she, I was in the room and she talked about being raped. And I, and I saw it all so clearly that she was holding on to, again, no one should touch my body or whatever the belief is behind that. 
that she couldn't come to an understanding that there was someone out there to blame and she ended up leaving and I don't know whatever happened to her, but this is the resentment. Resentment actually means to refeel, refeel over and over. And that's all the egoic mind does is make something out there that I can refeel to keep me in this hell that, you know, we were talking about earlier on the shows. But yeah, I kind of wanted to present this because we talk about the steps a lot and, you know, give some examples. But even my, my own wife asks me, can you explain the step a little more? Because I don't know what they are. And these things are helpful. Like, again, I still use this process to help me look into the beliefs and help me to get in touch with what's actually going on. And this is the same process, you know, as Spiri. And it's the same thing that the more I practice it, this is the mind training. You know, what are masters? What are people that have a pristine mind like David? It's someone that has mastered their resentments. They've mastered this idea of projection. It just doesn't happen. The fears are not there. The projection is not there. It's all coming back to the mind. And that's what this step actually has done for me and still does. I still use it. So I, I, I see Frank's back on the screen and it was great. I actually was feeling a bit like, oh, I don't have enough time between the shows. And I went into the room and I called Frank and I get a text that Frank just showed up in Camus. He came down from the monastery. And as soon as I talked to him on the phone, like everything fell away. It was like, ah, oh, oh, Frank, it's like my <laughs> co-pilot is there, you know? So it was really, it was really great to uh, even talk to you for a minute. But uh, yeah, Frank has 34 years experience with this step. So <laughs> see what he's got to say about it. Am I on? <laughs> okay. Hi. Yes. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I um, I um, I was just thinking about something. The you know when you said the resentment and the list, and I I just put everybody, <laughs> everybody I knew, because there was a resentment you know to to towards everybody, but then I realized you know it sort of uh, you know it repeats itself. It's always kind of the same thing that gets. Um, that gets triggered. And, um, you know, one of the great things about this step was that, uh, you know, uh, when you come in with all this shame and everything we did with the drugs and the alcohol, and, you, and, and it's that feeling that we're the only ones that ever did this and we're totally alone in this. So when, when we uh, expose it, it's really, you know, it's, it's, it's such a, a relief. And I always say, you know, <clears throat> coming into this community, I have a big advantage of having done, you know, of having been exposed to this step because part, the biggest part of it is really exposing. So I don't, you know, it's just getting in touch and, uh, you know, I just spent the last few days up at the monastery with David and Lisa and, um, you know, the, 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 the women who are staying, there was such a quiet environment and the beautiful, uh, you know, in this Canyon. So it was very, uh, <clears throat> you know, I could really get in touch with, with, with stuff. And, and, you know, also, um, one of the things that really helps is, uh, you know, music or the movies we show because it really bring, you know, it brings me to tears. And, and once these tears are coming, I'm open. I say, okay, now you, you have it, you know, you just, I give everything to you. Um, because I think it's that openness that, uh, that, that uh, you know, sp spirit needs to, to get in there, you know. Uh, and so with the fourth step in the program, I could really clean out a lot of stuff, but it, just you know this is another jump here because the the the, the course really uh, asks to go deeper and to forgive and forgiving meaning to see it's just all in my mind you know whatever happens to me now uh, I see it's a reflection of my mind it was very clear yesterday when I was walking in the canyon and I love, you know, I love the Southwest. I used to live there and I love that environment. And, uh, you know, and I was overwhelmed by the beauty, but at the same time, I knew, you know, this is, this is my mind. This is all. And, and, you know, it was one of these times when it really, it, I wasn't just blabbing what's in the book. I really felt it, you know, and, and it's, you know, it's the silence, um, 
but you know the 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 major work has or the major leap was done with the four step and then in the 10 step where it says you know continue to take personal inventory there's some language i don't like so much uh, like and when we were wrong promptly admitted it because that can can uh, uh you know if it's misunderstood uh it can uh, generate guilt but and and everything you know this is another thing i'm finding out everything is guilt that it's all guilt you know so the moral inventory word, I don't like the word moral, you know. Is a <laughs> so, you know, it was, okay, morality. So that can mislead, you know, I'm going to be good now. But it's not that I'm going to be good. That, that we, you know, what is working the program? What is practicing the program? I'm going to be my true self now. And to be my true self, I have to clean up you know, all the beliefs. And I think the most powerful prayer I've always said over the years and just came to me is, um, what did, what, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> it was, you know, what, what is it I'm still hanging on to that separates me from you? You know, that's really, you know, and this I, I did consistently even before I knew the course because I, I want to move Frank out of the way so I can be myself, be true to my myself. And that self is what we get to discover, you know. Um, but, but in order, you know, when, to, to, to get there for, you know, when you come in um, uh, through the 12 steps, uh, we have, this is a, it's an amazing beginning to, to write down this stuff and just to open to someone and 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 usually that person you it says you know admit to god and to another human being and that other human being is just <laughs> sitting there's a, no big deal i've done that too you know and so that's very um that's very i mean it's very freeing i go wow i'm not alone with this so one of the greatest and it says in the book you know one of the greatest rewards of this step is we get um rid of that feel of feeling of loneliness because there's all this shame and then there's that loneliness and I'm on the only one that's that screwed up and if anybody finds out who I am you know and then you see there's a whole room full of people who think the same and and um and and you know that's that was a big um that was such a a, a relief but now you know I'm going in deeper because i know everything needs to be exposed you know that prayer that i'm saying what am i holding on to is really that it's like what is in there that you're still protecting and i don't know that i'm protecting that i learned that in the course i didn't know i was afraid of god i learned that in the course you know the big book in in 12 steps tell me I'm a child of God. So I know, you know, if I'm a child of God, my true nature is God. And that's what I want to be, you know, is, is, is the divinity, the, the holiness. And, you know, if I don't spend time connecting with that in step 11, I'll never tr trust that holiness that is God and me. And, you know, I'm one. And it says that, in the book too i'm this one that has all power and i'm one with that power but i cannot access it completely if there's still some you know if i'm holding on to beliefs and and now i'm at in a at a stage of my life where i have to let go of every belief there's nothing that can be um oh i see my daughter there Hi. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> That's beautiful, Frank. I uh, I remember it's funny because you talk about getting rid of all these beliefs. And when I first sat in a room and they explained this step to me, he said, oh, you know, we just want to go through. We don't want to, you know, we related it to a garbage dump, you know, because we're clean, doing this house cleaning. It's like, we don't want to get every bottle cap. And I was like, hmm, and it's funny because now, like, I want to pick up every bottle cap. Like, every time there's this disturbance or whatever, however subtle it is, it's like, because these blocks, like, this is the fourth step. 
the blocks to love's awareness is my beliefs and this is how i actually get in touch with it so yeah i loved that part yeah and what, one of the things is you know it's important to get to, in in touch with the anger and the guilt and you know i have the other day we were watching this movie david showed the movie knowing and there was this separation you know from from uh fr from the son you know the, his child who's ascending and You know, there's so much guilt. And, and then I had to go deeper. There was also, you know, anger against him. <laughs> and, you know, all this has to be exposed. And, you know, and, and through moments like I'm going through now, which I couldn't before, you know, I couldn't cry. <laughs> Especially not you know, in a situation like this. But, you know, I, I had to also see the anger, you know, not just, and there was a lot of guilt. I thought, why, why couldn't I be there <laughs> when he died? <laughs> so, you know, that's how deep you have to go, even in front of a camera sometimes. And, uh, you know, that, that's what releases it. And then I'm open and I say, okay, spirit, come in now, you know, just heal it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the other day, you know, I was, we stayed up really late with Lisa, much too late for Lisa. It was 11.30 and then, <laughs> you know, it was coming out. And then, you know, it, was, it wasn't nine, it was 11.30 already. <laughs> so, so, uh, it was pouring out. And then, you know, I saw, okay, there's a resentment here, there's a resentment there. And, then, you know, and this sadness here and this guilt there. And, and that's what it is, you know, it's, it's a cleanse. And all, all it's, it's, uh, it's a cleanse. And, and all I have to, you know, and, and, and the fourth step for me was the beginning of that. And anybody, you know, who's in the 12 steps who's watching this, you know, I just encourage go deeper, go deeper, you know. Um, there's a song that really, that came to me in the last two months and it's an old song. We, by the way, we have to have that song soon as a introduction for our show. Just, just a little reminder. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and we listened to it with Lisa and boom, you know, here came the tears again and, and I, on, on, in the car, you know, on the ride down. And, you know, this gratitude that, I, you know, that I saw this figure, it was Jesus and, you know, and, and I saw, you know, and this love with, there was so much love now on this weekend. And, and yesterday we, you know, David and Lisa came in my room and I was in my bed and David was sitting <laughs> on one side of the bed and Lisa, and we were, you know, ex, uh, expressing something. I thought, you know, it was so loving. Just, you know, that came with the song and I, it just brings tears to my eyes. So crying is a big, um, is a big new thing for me uh, <laughs> because I, I didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't allow myself to do that. And, and, um, and I think there, there, there's the, you know, there's the cleanse, there's the exposing because, uh, you know, it's very clear in the course, I cannot, you know, don't ask me to get rid of your fears. I cannot do that because that would mean that you have no responsibility in it. I said, okay, now ooh, I feel guilty. What's my responsibility? But the responsibility is just, the, <laughs> you know, that I am, the ego is trying to protect some stuff in there and we're not aware of it. As I say, so where is this peace that passed? passive all understanding for years now where is that peace you know and and i was getting very um frustrated and impatient and throwing books around and 
Lillian, I, I, I found the course in this is, you know, you're afraid of it. That's the one thing. You're afraid of it. You're afraid of God. I never heard this before. Because the ego, you know, one, I, I, Eckhart Tolle talks about it. He said, once you start getting present, re, be, be prepared for backlash. You know, that's the first time I heard it. But there it's very clear. So the ego is protecting this. And then when, when we let all the emotion go, there's, there's something that opens. And that's just, okay, now you have it. Here it is. Now, couldn't be more open than now, what just happened to me before. You know, you know I said, okay, now you have it. Please heal it, you know. And, um, and now I had an experience, like I said yesterday. I walked in the canyon and I said, it's all my mind, you know. And that's the gift. And that's, that's the peace. And, and, um, and it did all, st- I have to say, it all started with the 12 steps. It all started with the, with the four step. And, um, and I'm, I'm so um, grateful that I had that lesson because now I come here and, and I expose. And people say, Whoa, where, well, I learned this 34 years ago. So, Thank you, um, Frank. <laughs> You actually, I had a few things come to me as you were talking. The, uh, you know, thank you for sharing about your son. For some of the people that haven't watched uh, our show before, Frank seemed to lose his son to a heroin overdose years ago. But that line of, you know, God enters through the wound, you know, is like, <laughs> when I hear that, it's like, <laughs> it's like, that's what we have to be willing to do, you know, to look at that. And we have to bring our awareness to it. You know, Frank was talking about, Jesus says in the Course, he won't take our fears from us. He can't intervene between cause and effect. It's in the fear and conflict section. So I have to bring my awareness to it to to let it go. Like, that's what we have to do. And, you know, that's what we're doing together. And, yeah, it feels really precious every time you share about about that experience. And, yeah, just wanted to share that with you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I don't think there's, you know, this went really, I went, like you say, right into the wound and I don't think right now I have too much more to say about it. <laughs> no, that's perfect. We're, we're yeah. wrapping up on time here today anyway, so. Yeah. So I love being here and doing this. This is, this is really, mm. yeah, this was a new experience for me. Yeah, you just did a fifth step with uh, Facebook Live throughout the world, so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're actually uh, starting to broadcast the shows on Facebook Live and so we can extend the reach to those who uh, aren't able to get into the Zoom room. But. Yeah, I'm looking forward to having you get back here to, uh, I think it's tomorrow, you and David and Lisa fly back and and we'll be back up there in a few months to uh, the monastery. So yeah, thanks for, thanks for beaming in. We're also going to have Frank beaming in from the south of France when he <laughs> makes his way across the great ocean. We're going to uh, continue having these shows right throughout the summer and I may be on the road for a few of them and we're going to try to stay connected and beam in and you know take the last step on the road so (laughs) yeah yeah, if anyone's in the south of france or anywhere in europe and want to see frank or maybe i'll be over there at some time yeah get a hold of us and we'll we'll come to see you so thanks for uh for joining us today for all of our shows what an amazing day starting with calico and yeah and ending now so We'll see you guys all in in a week and uh, back to uh, our MCs. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey and Frank. Yeah, thank you so much for that.
anything to share, Susan? Mm-hmm. I have some announcements and reminders, mm-hmm. but well, I'm pretty blank actually. <laughs> Okay, well, I did just want to share a reminder that um, we won't be having the shows on the Sundays of May 27th and June 3rd. So we will have shows next week. So please join us next week here in our Zoom room. Or as Jeffrey shared, we have um, some live streaming happening now on our A Course in Miracles Facebook page. So um, we can put that link in the chat. And so you're very welcome to join us either way. There's really no difference. We're just trying it out as an experiment. And um, right, so next week, join us. And then the following weeks, we've got our quantum immersion retreat here in Mexico. And there's still a few spaces left if you've got a spark to come join us here in Mexico. And um, then the following week, we'll have our Awakening from the Dream retreat, which we have every month. So um, we won't have our Ellen virtual shows, but they will resume the week after that. And for next week, I wanted to share that we've got a special treat coming up. And um, during our 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time, so this slot, the last, the last step, we've got a special happening with David and Ken. They're going to share all about non-dual teachings. So um, it'll be interview style, and Ken will be there interviewing David. So tune in next week for that. And uh, I've got a prompt here. I've got a prompt here to share very briefly about the quiet answer. So um, as another retreat offering that we have coming up, we have uh, the quiet answer at the monastery, which Frank was just sharing about, which is a, an absolutely amazing backdrop for, um, for this deep healing work. And it's going to be based in contemplation and silence, or those will be the, the main losing my words here uh that'll be really the way that the the retreat is conducted in silence and contemplation and then there will be healing um healing sessions i think with sound therapy and some other things and that's going to be with jackie and kirsten and suzanne up at the monastery so that's late june june 28th through july 2nd and you can find all of these things on our event page which is livingmiracles.org slash events so We look forward to seeing you either virtually once again or um, in person here at one of our retreats. So thanks for joining us, everyone. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Oh, we're going to bring everybody on screen. Mm -hmm.